Discord is actually doing something important now, huh? Uh, did you uh, also get the not Did you also get the notification about the the uh, ten to fifty people who are live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got notifications about that. Mm -hmm. So I got that like a couple days ago, actually. So you gonna are we gonna speak about how the man, the Mandal how the water tribes are apparently Mandalorian? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just look at their helmets. You, they they look the part already. Uh, great. Now I have to edit something in already. Gosh, just to give context. <laughs> Where are we dropping, boys? Because we're totally totally not referencing uh, what do you call it? Uh, Ultra Star God Grand yes. Caesar. Yes, Ultra Star God Grand Caesar. Man, I actually want to talk about that once we're done with all these dingo <laughs> matches. What the hell did you say to me? Two. All right. So, oh boy, we got a lot to cover today. We got three KWCs and three KWCEs to cover. So, oh lordy. Ah, uh, yes, it seems that Kaiju X can count to six. <laughs> yeah, seemingly so, yes. <laughs> you, yeah, you have reason to watch Grand Caesars now. Yes, yes I do. So far, but just call me the N-word, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what, now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so did we start the recording yet? Or no, oh, we're starting now, fudge it. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Oh, I just realized. Guess what day it is? It's three fourteen, St. Patrick's Day. Which or was... Pi Day. Oh yeah, Pi Day. That's right. And you know what that means, right? What does that mean? No. Cream. No. Pie! no! <laughs> yes. I do. <laughs> you know what? I'm keeping that one. Good. <laughs> My one regret was deleting the one at the end of the bonus video, because that could have added just context. Gosh darn it, why didn't I keep it? It would have been great. <laughs> I was about to say, hey, Pi Day, well, look at this go. No! <laughs> oh, no! Kaiju X wasn't expecting that one, did it? I, I didn't expect it until I expected it. <laughs> well, well, Bacon, a lot of people don't expect a cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> this is factual. Don't test your luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, test it out. <laughs> <laughs> See Good how many you, can get you shouldn't hear that word. Made. Yeah, exactly. The Goda had to mute his earphones because Wait, what? it was a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad word. <laughs> oh, you shoot. Oh, Always say the N-word and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So, yeah, we got a crap ton of matches to go over. I'm kind of surprised at how, how much has really kind of uh, pr cropped up recently. Then again, we are also in the middle of a monster month on the KWCE front, so that's probably contributing to that. So, oof. <clears throat> so, well, first we will go over our KWCs, and for whatever reason, that thumbnail never updated. Oh well. Uh, <clears throat> nevertheless, <sighs> let's begin. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting all the notifications now. All the, like, I just I'm just seeing the get the shotgun notification right now. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> oh boy, everything's gonna come at you at once, Nagoda. Anyway, <clears throat> that's what she said. Yes. <sighs> Bacon. <laughs> 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 Uh, today, uh, oh, right, that's what I was going to do. 
Hello everyone and welcome again to this month's KWCC. I am your host Kaiju X and with me today we have Fat Bacon Unicorn, John Wayne, and Yagoda. And today we will be going over the first of six matches. Three KWCs, three KWCEs. But first of six. And the first one of the night or day or whenever you're listening to this will is match 285 Godzilla Legendary vs. Zilla. Written by Jack Jordan and Banner by yours truly. And a sequel to Match 230, Legendary Godzilla vs. Megalon. So, we would oh, have gone over it last time if we just gone a day later. I, I know. I hate it when that happens. Darn scheduling conflicts. Darn inability to set a date. Nevertheless, I will go down the list top to bottom. Bacon, what do you think of the match? It was pretty good. I really liked how the different Zillas were the colors of the toys. That was a nice nod. The fight itself was really entertaining. And as a sequel to Godzilla vs. Megalon, it was really good. So, so I got mm, Agree the council does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Alex, did you have any, like, uh, did you read this but, one? But or? yeah, I, I, in all seriousness, I do agree with Bacon. It, it's a very good match. The fights were fun, and like it's been said with Jack Jordan's previous match, he, he does a really good job with the monster action, giving us details, their motivations, their thoughts. It really, it, it, it just feels natural mm -hmm. and unique. Nothing and of course, uh, Zilla died, so that's or sell the boss. <laughs> okay, okay, there you go. There's the appropriate wording. <laughs> but well, you I mean, so I, I believe I believe its babies died, but the main Zilla survived. Yes, correct. Yeah. Spoilers. Uh, but no, uh, yeah, I could totally see that. Yeah, I, I remember getting when Jack told me he was writing a sequel. I was excited because uh, I was really curious to see. Yeah, he had told me, like, you know, oh, I'm writing a sequel to Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Zilla. And, yeah, I was excited because I really wanted to see what he would bring. And, naturally, he did ask me a couple things, which I, in turn, asked Greyshot about. And, naturally, we said, yeah, or thankfully said yes to, because I think this match was able to work out with how it paces, how it paces the, how it paces the story, how it sets everything up. One could argue the setup may be a little on the slow side, but I think it's perfectly fine. I think everything sort of uh, unfurls very naturally. What I love about Jack Jordan's stuff, just even with the previous matches, that the world... You're really allowed to take in the world with uh, his matches, and it's wonderfully done. You re you really get a sense that these are kind of like international, uh, international crises. Very real sense of that, and I adore it. Uh, but with that said, yeah, I think, yeah, Godzilla vs. Zilla, this is a, like, I guess this is semi-long time coming after Toho was, like, you know, mocking version of it. And I think this one utilizes the concept incredibly well. Uh, even, like, you know, a surprising element we had never considered before, which would, I think, as you see on the banners, are the adolescent Zillas. I don't think we, because, you know, when we think offspring, we often think, oh, the babies from the 98 movie. But I think it was important to consider that the animated series, you do get to see a sub-adult Zilla in the first episode. And that at, at this point in time, at least, you know, the, the, the uh, teen and baby Zillas have cooperated in the anime novels. So it's like there is a creed, I guess there is like a specific credence to like, you know, offspring, a, 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 uh kind of expanding into not just the babies, but the uh, teens as well. And it benefits from that. This match match very much benefits from that because, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, the baby, yeah, the babies, the friggin' te the teens, I think, are easily my favorite highlight. I love Kaiju how... X, there's, Kaiju X, don't be a Disney. There's a word for it. It's called adolescence. Okay, I, I, adolescence, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> the adolescents, I think, ah, oh, they're great. Not only are they a cool color reference to the, uh, like, the toy, the Treadmaster's toy line, that's a cool reference to that, but
But it's also just like, you know, they're given their own things to do. Like the way they attack, they, the way they sort of coordinate and attack, I think helps this match really stand on its feet, quite literally. And then, yeah, just Mamazilla being... And I, I also love how the Motherzilla is distinguished as the one with the atomic breath. It's like, you know this one's the leader because it has the atomic breath. The uh, like, But at least the babies have the underdeveloped breath with the gas... The gas breath, which helps dis uh, like, you know, differentiate it. So I'm really glad this was able to uh, take off in the way it did. This this was just, honest to gosh, a really good match from Jack Jordan. Love his stuff. And yeah, he uh, to me, he did not disappoint with this one. And on the banner front, as it was also made by me, I had a blast making it. Granted, I had to change New Orleans, that picture of New Orleans in the background from day to night. Because I was like, oh, it's at night. Son of a... Because <laughs> uh, this was framed just a little differently. But I was like, alright, you know, color correction and all that fun stuff. But yeah, most of my fun was with coloring in the Zillas. It also gave me an excuse to use the trading, uh, trading model, uh, the Godzilla trading model, like, sprite. Which I think works really well and plus it's a really good model anyway so it's like all right <laughs> uh, kaiju x yeah uh you you do you know something that toho themselves don't color correction oh yeah 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 totally totally oh yeah totally. oh yeah but yeah i do more than Toho. Yeah, here's some guys been running around doing some color corrections <laughs> yeah he's crazy weirdos <laughs> uh anyway yeah, i hope we have him on the show one day i know i know it'd be great it'd be great uh but yeah, he no, needs to read but... the entirety of the hesai series <laughs> <laughs> yeah that and a millennium box set oh that that would be awesome. <laughs> All right, Joe, we're sorry. They do color correct. They just dump the DVDs in their orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's better than the other bucket. Uh, I don't want to say what. Anyway. Uh, uh, I will say I do have a slight nitpick with the banner, mm -hmm. mainly with the Adultzilla. Yeah. I, I, I know I've said this a lot with several banners. I don't know. Compared to the other Zillas, which look good for the banner... The adult Zilla looks kind of out of place because you know that that one's obviously a toy. Well, or like just a different sort of a. I guess like the style's a little different. Yeah, like the style. I mean, the, people seem to complain about that a lot. It's like, gosh darn it, get over it. <laughs> I also no. did, I also didn't want it to be too redundant compared to the other Zillas. Like you know, obviously I think the the adolescent Zillas you know I think are distinguished by using the trading battle uh, trading battle models, and I think they work a lot better for it. So, and plus, the trading battle models were already PNGs, so it's like, you know, made it really easy just to, you know, uh, like, trace around the areas I need to color, color them in, and, you know, put uh, put them up. It was a blast. This was a this was a blast to do and a blast to make, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to kind of collaborate with Jack with the, when it came to the banner, because he had to supply with, with some of the, uh, just just some of the details. So it's like, you know, okay, they're, they're these adolescent Zillas, they're colored after the uh like you know this toy line from 98 and i was like okay keep that in mind <clears throat> so and i purposely i remember very purposefully because i think the image i pulled of the mamazilla from was uh i think i i uh like had more color to it but i purposely kept it more desaturated to reflect the final war zilla since that was just kind of like my mental mood at the at the at that point it was like okay time to be a true to form here <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like my personal nitpick is I wish I could have replicated more the uh, Godzilla the series charge up atomic ray a little better. Now looking back at it, I think that would be my personal nitpick. But that's just me. On it, honestly, when it comes oh, to honestly, that, <laughs> honestly, I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, the only part of the atomic breath that looks kind of off is the eye, but I, the spine's great. Hmm. I guess, because, I, I mean, the eye has, like, a glow. I I must I think I exaggerate the glow too much. If it were just kept around the eye, I think it would have been good. Because, yeah, I know Zilla's eyes glow when he uses the atomic breath in the show, but, again, I think I just over-exaggerated it for this banner in particular. So, if there, yeah, any nitpicks on my part, that would be it. Other than that, though, I personally really enjoyed making this banner and having the whole swarm of babies just crawling up Godzilla's legs. That was great.
But yeah, no, I love 285, and I'm glad this is a 285 match. I'm pushing for this one, and the one that will be up and coming in a while for 290. Anyway, Nagoto, what do you think of uh, 285? Uh, was it? Well, I, I didn't read it. For, uh, hold up. Oh, he pulled a gel. Oh no, no, God, uh, how could you? Uh, I'll I'll be back in a bit. I need to go put some table the way. Uh, until then, Godzilla vs. Zilla. Talk about Godzilla vs. Zilla. Oh, okay. All right. Ah, bummer all. <laughs> Joe, oh, what are your thoughts? Yes, Joe, what are your thoughts? Are you there? He's pulling a Birdman now. Oh, no. All the difference is Joe's more likable. Boy, oh. more likable. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> it, it's it's some facts. <laughs> hate, hate or like Alex, he's spitting straight facts. <laughs> Don't. Oh, you didn't read it. <laughs> Dang it, Joe. Uh, Yo! Wow, oh, that's saying something when I read one today. <laughs> it's one with Zilla, no less. But then again, well, I... Well, I hear there's a sequel to a critically acclaimed uh, Oscar winner, so yeah. Yeah, I know, pretty... I think what I told you, it was like, oh, I was... It's, uh, it's like, what did you think of this? And I think you said cool, but it, uh, I can't remember you saying anything. I was like, ah, oh, Zilla. But then I was like, Jack Jordan's sequel. I was like, ooh. <laughs> Jack George sequel is pretty good, so. <laughs> All right, so I guess, uh, okay. So since you, since Nagoda didn't read it, Joe didn't read it, and we're the only three here, I, I guess we don't have much of a choice but to migrate over to match two eighty six, Gororin versus Biolante, alternatively I, known as Biolante versus Gororin. I can't wait for us to get to the KWC East, just so you could be the only one who's who said who read them. Gosh darn it. If you don't mind when, I can say my thoughts on the match real quick. Okay, cool. So you put your tables yeah, on. Because that's, that's the only reason I went silent, because it's windy outside and I have to put tables in a shed. Okay. All right. Okay. So can you guys hear when? Uh, kind of, yeah. But, you know, I, we hear you louder than it, so. Okay. Uh, Okay, never mind. You're kind of glitching out there, man. You're glitching out. Nagoda, you're glitching out. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I am putting. I'm gonna have that peaked early on, and then I'll put it up here when we discover it. Oh man, that's great. Oh, oh good grief. Oh, holy crap. Uh, okay, that was good. But alright. Uh, Nagoda, yeah, like, you still there? Are you still there? Snake? Oh, yeah, he said he'll be here all week, but he typed it. Oh, no, wait, that was Joe. Never mind. Uh, Nagoda. Well, you're here all week, then why are you not talking? Wait, Ew, who's here? Gracious. Because gracious. I am here. Hooray! Ew. I guess your bro's thing must have been canceled then if you're here. Yes, I thought it was canceled. He told me it was canceled. I then it was like, oh yes, I can join. <laughs> I, I had dinner real quick. Came back, realized no, my brother's thing wasn't canceled. They just started without me, or it was canceled. But then the, everyone came. So they're like, everyone came together. It's so like, never mind, <sighs> it's not canceled. But it's not going on. So yeah. <laughs> Hooray! Great. He's streaming it right now on Twitch. <laughs> All right, great. And he doesn't want you interrupting, which means you're here with us to suffer. I was a, I was a mighty Bradenberg. <laughs> now I'm not. But no, regardless, yes, I am here to suffer with all of you. Nobody cares, man. <laughs> <laughs> cool story, cool story, bro. But tell it to someone who cares. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, this is how it feels to be loved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
All right, so Nakoda died. Great shot. We just got started. Uh, we were just going over 285. Uh, uh, Godzilla vs. Zilla. What'd you think of it? Oh, I thought this was an excellent uh, sequel to Jack Jordan's Godzilla vs. Megalon. Um, I really enjoyed it. Love the use of the juvenile Godzillas in the fight. And it also had one of the best beam battles, in my opinion, uh, with both monsters using different tactics in it usually it's just beam battle occurs and then explosion or something it's very short this one had a good pace to it where it wasn't overdone but it kept changing the dynamic which i really enjoyed uh obviously the ending i think most people can see going into the fight but i am excited to, excited to see how it goes and i'm always uh happy to post a, one of jack's messages they are so far out of the suit he's written they're really 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 good mm-hmm the only thing I will say is I think his monster choices could be. I, I hope I hope for his next one he he does something a little bit more crazy if for his if he does this third match for his third match. Mm-hmm. Uh, but until then, I'm uh yeah I'm excited to uh, see how it goes and yeah I'm happy with how this turned out. Mm-hmm. Also, the banner by you is. Pretty good. I will say I'm maybe not the biggest fan of all the different Zilla colors because I think that can confuse some people in regards to like, well, why is Zilla all different colors? I, I know there's a reference. There, these are references. Yes. Um, to I think they're the references to the toys. Yeah. If I'm not tread, mistaken. Uh, Treadmaster toy line. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But guys, don't you know Godzilla fans are sort of like Star Wars fans, except being except for being assholes. They're actually stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure how that would go into the the. Well, my 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 point of the matter is, it just looks a little weird. Like if someone didn't know that, they'd be like, "Why is Zilla like multicolored?" I mean, obviously the the, the one that's normal that has the green illuminated spines that looks really cool, good, especially with co- compared to like Godzilla's like glowing spines. Mm-hmm. Um, Great shot. But yeah, no, it's a little uh, uh, the the whole sh- like the banner itself, also the city kind of. So it, it like it doesn't all naturally flow together as well as like I would argue the next uh, two banners. I think they look and kind of blend together a lot better than I, than this one. Not to say it's bad, but mm-hmm. it's it, the blending I think could use a little improvement and coupled with the Zilla designs. Like if you don't know it, you're gonna be a little off put. Regardless though, still a very very good banner. Grayshot, guys, I think Grayshot's being yes. racist. <laughs> I was gonna say that. <laughs> also, Gray, Grayshot, here's my counter argument. They reference why the colors are changed in the match. Do they? Yes. I think they do, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah they say it's a genetic right. mutation. Yeah, that's uh, right, that's right. Which, yeah, it makes... So, therefore, you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm pointing out the fact that not... I'm not pointing out the fact that it's not referencing match. I'm pointing out the fact that if you're just looking at it... People would well, be like, I mean, there's context to the match. Why the the story supplies you you are true, assume, true, true. you are assuming make a very bold assumption that you are the mindset you are taking on is the reader that looks at the banner and skips to the end. <laughs> oh no, 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 in, no, in I, other I, words, I am saying a good number of Godzilla fans. I'm going with the good, fact that most absolutely true. I'm going with the fact I, I'm going with the fact that usually and go with me here. Usually people look at the banner before they read the match, right. and usually their choice of the banner. Usually when you form an opinion on something, it's when you first look at something, not when you read a, read something else and then look at it again. Well, wow, they certainly my point. got lied to. When you first look at it, it my, when you first look at it, you're 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 looking at it, you're like, why are the Zillas different colors? Well, yes, should, there is context that, in the match. That there, are, should... there is context with the match, but. If you're looking at it for the first time and you don't know the Treadmaster reference, you're going to be like, huh, that looks weird. Well, right. But that should be the engaging point for a person who doesn't know the reference. That should be like, yeah, why, exactly. are, why are they different colors? Oh, genetic mutation. All right. <laughs> Look at the chaos that I have started. <laughs> the, the real different colors is that Zilla just wanted her own ranger team, so... She- it's super sentai Godzilla. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but uh, like I had a blast. Like I said earlier, I had a blast making the banner. I do admit I do, probably should have found better buildings to use for the foreground. Uh, at least I don't know. There's something a little off uh, building from pink, uh, purple. <laughs> 
But yeah, nevertheless, uh, Nagoda, now that you're here, do proper and not died, uh, resurrected Nagoda, uh, what'd you think of 285? Uh, it was pretty fun. I really liked how, uh, like, there was just a bunch of, like, Zilla children just eating everything. Like, they just came out of the swamps and the ground and just started eating those people on the interstate. Also, really liked the colorful Zilla, like, the, 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 like, just how colorful they are, I guess. And how they just all just started attacking all at once. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else was there? Uh... The banner looks pretty nice, except for the purple city. <laughs> right, that that was a byproduct of me, because the city in the background was... I had oh. I had mentally seen this as, uh, like, more of the Twilight Hours. So I found this perfect picture that fit the image I had, and I had a very hard time looking for a good image where I could, you know, put everything together. Didn't so I was like, okay. Did someone about this banner artist thread, too? I think like about making smaller giant buildings next to giant giant buildings. I think so. I can't remember, but <clears throat> uh, nevertheless, uh, freaking yeah. I remember the uh, like. I was looking for a good picture in New, New Orleans. I was like, okay, you know what? This one's good. It's a nice afternoon. Then I uh, then I had looked through the match, wanted clarity from Jack. Then he told me, oh, it's at night. I was like, son of a... So I want... Uh, like, this is not my first rodeo when it comes to color correction. Uh, so, yeah, if it's, like, weirdly purple... I mean, sometimes the sky goes purple. I, in my experience, at least, it goes purple, so... Yeah, fun fact. I was going to do a Godzilla vs. Zilla match. The exact same Godzilla that's in this match. Then I saw the banner at the end of the survey and just thought, ah. Ah, uh, someone already beat you to the punch. Yep. When, <laughs> when I first started write, uh, reading the KWCE, uh, I wrote a match in like seventh grade, and it had a lot of similarities to this. Hmm. And it's, but that match is so much better than the one I wrote in seventh grade. Oh, I mean, naturally, you were in seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh, but all right. Uh, and I think yeah, Alex. Yeah. So everyone else has given their piece with two eighty five. Now that gray shots come in. All right. Sweet. So now we will do proper. Finally migrate over to match two eighty six. Gorin versus Biolante, also known as Biolante versus Gorin. Uh, written by Christian Salibert and Banner also supplied by Christian Salibert in this particular instance. Uh, we'll go from the top, go down to the bottom. Uh, Bacon, what'd you think of it? Zillions from the Showa era were finally used, so it was good. <laughs> um, I, I really like that, in all seriousness, that the Showa zillions were used. Mm -hmm. Um, I, th I thought the fight itself, for what it was, it was entertaining, but it, it was alright. The way that Gororan dies is pretty sick. Um, yeah, overall, it was an entertaining match, but it, not the best. Hmm. That's really much to say. Alright. Uh, Grayshot, what do you think of Gororan versus Biolante, as we'll call it? Well, first off, this was one of my favorite uh, Facebook descriptions to ever write for a KWC match. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because uh, um, the... Uh, <laughs> Gororan, like, if anyone, everyone always asks, like, guys, Gororan, is he in jeopardy of getting retired? Well, honest to God, no. Because A, people oh, like writing honest. Him, and B... I have the most fun writing or like writing the descriptions and or uh, I think people just have a ton of fun writing, making the banners because like I stress this again, there is another Biolante versus uh, Gororan match uh, that is in the works or was it and we had a banner for it uh, or we just had maybe it was just an extra banner. I'm blanking on uh, which no, regardless. I, uh, Landon was going to do his own so. Okay. It's well, yeah, regardless, we had another one which by God was was amazing mm -hmm. um yeah and i was like oh okay 
like because there were a few issues with this banner specifically around the like the uh, chest of Violante. So I was like, huh, it's weird. Uh, so maybe we can use this one, and it didn't fit the tone. But uh, yeah, no, for the match, it's, for the banner itself, really good by Thomas or Thomas by Christian. Um, I think it's a little plain, but it does blend very nicely. Like the the like this very much looks like it's one shot. Uh, Goran looks a little weird, but I, every other otherwise everything else looks really good. Um, the match itself, I quite enjoyed, though I do think that uh, the acid of Biolante would have reduced that little plant to nothing but a pool of cactus sap. Uh, <laughs> But that's just me. Uh, regardless, though, the banner itself actually kept Biolante and Gorin's fight entertaining. Uh, the human element was okay. It's good to bearable. Like, I didn't find it... Like, yeah, the alien, like, the exil- the alien plotline and how that's brought, I think it's good, but I didn't think it had a good resolution. Right. And I kind of wish that we would have seen Gorin fall to Biolante purely instead of just the antitoxin being used against it. And like it was in the match, right. um, and having all the spines fall off. I mean, I mean, Biolante impaling the sucker is still neat, but I kind of wish we would have had a maybe. I don't know. Maybe when I think of Gororin, uh, I think he should have been like crushed between Biolante's jaws or like something a little bit more brutal, because of how annoying the thing is. And that's why I kind of like the little guy. Is like he can make a monster everyone so ticked off that they just want to kill it in the worst way. Oh, right, right. <laughs> At least it's in my head. So I, uh, yeah, no, I still really enjoyed it. I don't think it's my, it's not one of my favorite of uh, Christians. For that, yeah, I'd have to turn to like matches like. Uh, I think a two thirteen last year. Yeah, two, like yeah, two thirteen. Mothra, yeah. Manda, and Megalon. Uh, Megalon. Yeah, yeah, that one was That's- really good. Um, this one was good. I, 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 I enjoyed it. Uh, Alex, what'd you think of, uh, 286? I have to say, I was kind of blanking out of, uh, Grayshot's explanation while I was just l- looking at Nagoda posting all the color corrections. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't really read it, but I know it, it's good enough. When someone finally does show Exilians instead of the o- instead of Final Wars Exilian, so mm-hmm. Christian gets some good points for that for being a good boy. Yeah. All right. But did you have anything else to elaborate on, or uh, no? All right. Except yeah. that's your turn. Yeah. So okay, fair enough. It is my turn. Uh, yeah. I. I mean, I do like it. The plot, I think it's very much more structured, like the story element is more to be more a KWC like, if that makes sense. Where it's like, you know, partially is the monsters, it's, it's super basic, you know, the like, yeah, bonus points for show exilience, thank gosh. And, you know, also bonus points for referencing Monster X in, uh, like, you know, Monster Zero. That's like, that's great, that's really cool. I really enjoyed sort of the, uh, like hinting at a greater universe involved, like a greater, uh, a greater story concerning the show exilians. Like I do like that. I like how it interconnects. It makes sense. I like the fact that he that like the show of exilian controller doesn't laugh off Garor. It's like no, he's a weapon. He's an effective weapon. We're gonna use him for this mission. Uh, I do like that. And Yoshiwara was a surprise. Like. I don't think many people are immediately going to catch on of who Yoshiwara is. And, uh, no, she's the developer of the uh, weird Aneb thingy-bajig, uh from the uh, Dark Horse comics. So. Uh, is that who she is? Yeah. So, it's a- I tried looking, I, like, I tried, like, look, I was like, is that she character from, like, the show? From, like, when Gorin was in there? Like, because no. the antitoxin kind of makes sense. No, Dark Horse comics. She is from the Dark Horse comics. Ah, uh, okay. I need to read those again. Mm-hmm. So it was like that was a surprising, uh, I guess, like a surprising little element to implement. I was like, oh yeah, Yoshiwara, no way. So it was like if you're familiar with this stuff, it's a nice read. I think even by itself, it's an all right read. But again, I like I don't want to pass it off as I think it's a fine, it's a solid quality Christian match. 
that doesn't go under... It's above average, but it's not his greats. Uh, is the way I look at it. Uh, and yeah, I think this one is a perfectly fine little match. Maybe it expands into something a little more. Maybe it'll just be this. You know, not all matches need sequels. And I'd be alright if this didn't. I think this is fine as a fun little standalone thing. With, you know, small little teases if anyone wants to give a crack at a sequel if they wanted to. But I don't think the match itself ever needs one. So... Uh, it's a good alone. So, nevertheless, uh, I do have to say it does kind of end rather abruptly. Uh, it, it just, uh, it's like, well, it works, and it just kind of ends. So, no, uh, then again, cutting back to the controller would have almost guaranteed some kind of sequel hooks. That might have been for the better to keep it off of for looking at this as a standalone. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, and yeah, banner. The banner wise, I remember there was a little bit of a problem because Grayshot always wants his stuff in. Uh, to, uh, he wants it every, all, all the new banners from here on to be in the 10, uh, 10 24 by five twelve dimension size. But this, I demand it. But this particular banner right here was made with the original one thousand by four fifty aspect ratio. So it was a little, like, it was a little awkward trying to, like, you know, trying to fit everything into frame. And then concerning the glowing belly issue, I had requested to, uh, I had requested to, uh, uh, Christian to do that, and it wasn't too great. So I was like, all right, we'll have to go with the non-glowing version then for some reason, because Christian wasn't able to do the glowing thing like how I do the glowing thing. So it's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> so, but you know, it's still a it's still a fine, solid banner. But it definitely benefited from its original. The it definitely benefited from being a uh, thousand by four fifty over a th over the new aspect ratio. So it's like, yeah. But that that's not the banner's fault. That's uh, Gray Shot's fault. <laughs> Me be trying to keep a standard. <sighs> what is this? <laughs> we have standards. We do. All right. I tr I attempt I attempt them so hard. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> uh, Nagoto. You remember, guys, this is the person who posted one sixty four. I want to stress that one sixty four. We actually went back because I never read. Okay, again, I say this. I never read one sixty four after all the feedback on the likes and like, oh, because I I mean I made the match. I knew what it was. Then I actually went back and apparently. Uh, all the dot dot dots turned into question marks throughout the whole match. So that's <laughs> a major, major reason why. Yeah, and I can explain. They finally read it. I can explain why and how we how, we went back and fixed it. We were able to fix it all up because fortunately Tyler still had the original document. So it was like, so it was an easy enough fix for me and my brother to do. And I can explain why it was so as messed up as it was. Can you? Yes. Can you? Yes, because the old, all the old KWCs from 256 on back had a very specific formatting style. You couldn't just copy-paste large swaths of text. And I remember Anthony had trouble with 164 because it was the first KWC to be this that big. So you had to... Because, yeah, there were a large swaths of text you kind of had to do and I think because of that it kind of created a lot of uh, I guess formatting problems by the end and that's why 164 turned out the way it did hear that guys 164 broke the KWC quite literally you're, you're welcome <laughs> well that's one of the reasons <laughs> so. yeah we also can't have hugging so yeah <laughs> it broke new ground <laughs> Yeah, like bacon, so much no, ground. No hugging, even though hugs are very important. But yeah, we're, we're on a strictly no hug policy. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not like the kaiju are screwing each other; they just want to hug. Yeah, it's not Godzilla like versus Camera. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Tom is the exception. <laughs> Still, Godzilla, Godzilla says Tom is the exception. 
I want to stress, Tom never even had him two monsters hug, so... Yeah. Uh, he had them fuck. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> match 14. It was it was a glorious debut match. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. That's right, Tom wrote earlier. <laughs> no, <once>. it wasn't. <laughs> it was a debut for two monsters. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll Yeah, it was one way to get them both into the KWC. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, wait, shoot. No. After, after, after the fight, Gamera said to Godzilla... There's still one hole left to fill. Oh no, okay. Uh, Nakoda, <laughs> what'd you think of 286? Uh, it was an interesting match. The banner looks pretty nice. I, ju I just realized right now that all of the, the blog format matches have a purple line under the banners. Yeah, <laughs> I just, think that's just, just a. Format, I guess. I yeah, think that's so. just a, like part of the format or whatever. I don't know why, yeah, but I think it's just it is. there. So. Yeah, it's just there. And. It was a interesting match. Didn't I expect? I like how they reference like Monster Zero One, Monster Zero, King Ghidorah is just doing something else, and then Zero One, Monster X is doing something else. But they send in Zero Two, which is a Gororin this time. Also, uh, what else was there? Also, like how he, he, he uh. Gororin just melted away. Or just, he melted and then just got thrown. Again, I would I would argue that the fatality should have been him either in Violante's jaws or just in general just melting into a goo. Just like uh, like Wicked Witch of the West style prior to losing C Cactus. <laughs> I'm fine. melting. I'm melting. Bacon, no! Yeah, big corny. I think we just killed Bacon. My second or third best friend is gone. <laughs> <laughs> also, we finally got our plants on plant match. Yep, uh, strangely enough, it took this long to get to the battle of two plant monsters we got. Interesting. It took 286 matches. Yep. Technically, uh, I think a little less, like, subtract 54, because that's when uh, Groran was introduced. 232 matches. <laughs> My second or third best friend's back. Hooray! What, what, I don't know what just happened. My entire tablet shut down as Kaiju X was talking. Uh, your tablet shut down while I was talking. They tend to do yeah. that when Kaiju X talks. No, it wasn't just the cha chat. My entire tablet shut off. Well, th th that's exactly what happened then. Your I tablet that shut off. Happened. Yeah, but I don't know why. <laughs> Did it run out of power? No, I mean, it's turned not it back full on, battery. So I would say no. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I maybe you pressed the button on accident. Who knows? No, uh, I'm <laughs> not even near it. How do I Was it Russian hackers? Hacker. There, that is the, usually the other option. Uh, all I could say is this is white people problems. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Damn, Kaiju. Did you want an EMP at my house? Nagoda's talking. Wait, what? Wait. <laughs> Nagoda's talking. Wait, what? I am? <laughs> no, Nagoda, uh, as you were saying, as you were saying before. Oh, no, that, that was all I had to say about the match. Oh. Man, I that's all I had to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, clown Kaiju X. <laughs> Kaiju X thought the words got stuck in his mouth. Yes, they really <laughs> did. They really did. All right. Uh... That's what you said. <laughs> all right, uh, Joe, uh, what'd you think of it? Did you read 286, or are you going to disappoint me once again? Wait, he didn't read... Wait, did he not read Godzilla vs. Zilla? Nope. No. Well, that's his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, his name is ZVG, the ass eater. Okay, he didn't read it. Aww. Uh, looks like I have to launch an EMP at your house, Joe. Anyway. <laughs> Joe, no! <laughs> His response is damp. <laughs> uh, all right. So I think uh, any additional thoughts on two eighty six before we move on, or is that just me? I think we're good. I don't. All right. There's still one more hole to fill. Dang blasted. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 We're moving on. We are yeah. moving on. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> to, to the most <laughs> Fine, fine. Let me rephrase that. There's still one more match to fill. <laughs> gonna be golden all right <laughs> all right so first let's go over match 287 uh Gar versus zilla written by thomas eckert and banner by matthew williams uh first we will go over the match itself then something uh how can you say related to the match we'll get to that in a little bit uh bacon what'd you think of 287 did you have a chance to read it what'd you think of it it's a match that exists um, it's simple. It's all right. The I liked how Zilla died. Like just the brutality of it was pretty nice. But it's an all right match. And hey, War Gilgar gets to fight on his own without his master to back him up. Whoa! It's Corona Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just it's Birdman. It's it's Birdman, yes. Same difference. <laughs> Dig blessed it. So, all right. Do you have anything more to elaborate on, Bacon? Or hmm? no, not not really. It's a simple match. That's okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Grayshaw, what did you think of two eighty seven? Uh. Probably the best Wargilgar match that we have in the KWC. <laughs> if I were, if I honestly, because it was oh, like, oh, honestly. This, uh, oh. I mean, compared to all the others, uh, this one, because uh, he had a bit of personality, he got to see it in full use in this match. Zilla also, I liked, was this, uh, again, went back to the more mutation aspect, but still had the ray, which was nice. Um,. His death was actually also brutal. Like again, in regards to uh, 285, uh, you had the Zilla Godzilla, you know, blast. Then usually uh, that one did it differently in regards to like the, how it was like multi staged. This one was more like a uh, just defy your expectations because you're like, oh, the two beams have clashed. Now they're gonna go back at it. Oh wait, Zilla's dead. Wait, what? <laughs> so I. Uh, I actually kind of like that because I was like, when I was reading this the first time, I was like, "Oh, what's gonna happen? Oh, he's just gone. He, yeah, he's not coming back." <laughs> Ooh. So uh, yeah, I actually was kind of a fan of that. Um, but anyway, yeah, Workilgar I thought was used very well. Zilla again, very good tooth and claw match on his part. Um, yeah, honestly, thought this was really, honestly. really. <laughs> I thought this was really good by Thomas Eckhart. I don't think it's one of my favorites of his. He, I, but I still think he's a very talented writer, and this is definitely an example of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is one of his older ones from a couple of years ago. It just took a while for me to finally get around to it due to uh, <clears throat> circumstances. Uh, but yeah, uh, but for, before I ramble on, uh, Al, I was about to call you John Wayne. Alex, did you read it? <laughs> John Wayne would have been acceptable. Okay. Uh, yeah, I remember getting this match a long time ago and really liking it. It's been a again been a long time since I read it, but I thought it was a nice, solid, fun match. Like Grey Shot said, it gave War Gilgar plenty of personality and time to shine on his own. Mm -hmm. And of course, Zilla died, so that's always a plus. <laughs> and actually died, and not pretend died, like Alex would like to imagine to. Bum 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 ba -na 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 Dig blasted Joe, that's what I was gonna get to in a bit. <laughs> Alright, uh but yeah, uh, I have to say, once again, this is just a simple effective match from Thomas Eckert. I think he demonstrates the two monsters very nicely. And like said before, Wargugar winning is a bit of a surprise. Like it's nice to see him earn his own victory. Even with even with the high hindsight that Wargugar and Spyler are gonna be retired really soon. It's nice to see that there was someone out there who was like, you know what? You, War Gilgar deserves a win. He doesn't need Spyler on his side. He's his own independent terror beast. 
Kaiju X, it's been five years too late. I remember getting this match in 2015. I know. Uh, I wish I had been more competent editor. Uh, but at least I was a competent editor five years the, too the, late. This this match could have saved those two terabies. <laughs> no one would have. <laughs> they were already dead. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I find it pretty personal that you're retiring monsters that I brought in. Oh, gosh. Oh, no! <laughs> Let's not open that can of, can of worms. Let, again, we stress that, again, even with good matches, the reason why we're removing these monsters is that way we can open the door for monsters that are very similar. Just like in regards to Godzilla, we do not, we do not treat any monster unfairly, but when we want to bring in new monsters and there are others that are very close to it, uh, we do look at the ones that, you know, have a tendency to be close to those and consider removing them. And this is no exception. So we're bringing in monsters from God Man and Green Man, correct? Epic! Moving on! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about Megaloman? Anyway, po point aside... Yeah, that hair. <laughs> uh, point aside... Uh, yeah, I think uh, Evil Manila. Yes, <laughs> Joe, yes, we're bringing Evil Manila. Oh, no! Uh... No, no, no. It, it, uh, it's that when you realize evil Manila could actually be brought in compared to regular Manila because evil Manila is regular size. <laughs> uh, to blast it, uh, Nagoto, what'd you think of? What'd you think of the match? Oh, oh, my turn. Yes. Uh, it was really short. Nagoda, it's gonna be a good day when we finally read this match during a KWCR video. Uh, I know, a committee reads video, absolutely. <sighs> uh, it was really short, and then... Uh, what else was there? I, I can't think of anything. Vanna looks okay. But then that kind of makes sense since these two... Since that, since Wargilgar is kind of hard to get nice looking images of that mm -hmm. are that close up mm -hmm. other than that uh what else is there here we go let me just paste this into the chat this was a fun line his hopes were shattered <laughs> and his hips hey <laughs> So. <clears throat> Other than that, that's all I have to say. Alright. Uh, okay. Uh, Joe, did you happen to read the match by happenstance? It's short and quick. <laughs> He's typing. He's gonna say no. I know. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait, Wait for, for it. it. <laughs> I read it two years ago. Joke's on you. <laughs> oh, you probably read it on DeviantArt. Yeah, 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 that's right, because I think he, uh, Thomas up uploaded to his DeviantArt some years ago, so... So, yes, he did read it. Two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, dig it. He had both... Uh, he, he said yes and no at the same time. <laughs> he did Why yes, but actually no. Yeah! <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Alright, uh, Joe's still typing. He, uh, does he actually have more to say? Oh, okay. I liked it then. I'm happy that Walker got won by himself and Zilla deservingly fucking died. <laughs> Unfortunately, others don't see your view, considering <laughs> this is only his his only other win. Mm -hmm. So, and it may be his last win. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> uh, we'll we'll see when that comes around. Nevertheless, though, uh, all right, uh. There was also one more thing I wanted to go over, and it's the beauty of the comics section. It is absolutely beautiful, and allow me to take a moment to read it. This site discriminates Ultra Kaijus. They even use rip-off Choju Wogyogar before using any superior Ultra Kaiju. It does not it, end there. It, it continues. 
Anthony Romero comes in and says, Well, the site is Toho Kingdom, so you'll only see monsters directly related to Toho. That includes everything that falls under their shows, like Zone Fighter, and limits the Ultraman Kaiju to just the scant few episodes, and Ultraman USA that Toho distributed. This is very true. Anthony Romero is also the person at Toho Kingdom. The response? Well, Toho Kingdom is not an official site, so there's no reason not to include them. <laughs> there's a lot of reason not to include them, including lawsuits. I know! What a fool! <laughs> Before. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, lawsuits. Uh, yeah, lawsuits. Toho Why has connections with Toho Kingdom. Like, <laughs> Toho Kingdom is a fan operated website, but Toho has connections. Where do you think the KWC got its name? Yep. Oh, yeah, I forgot about. So, are any of you two gonna reply to him about this? Uh... Or are you just gonna leave it to Anthony? I don't know. I am Pass it along to Anthony, that way he can deal with it? Oh, that just sounds like my job description. <laughs> I think it's oh, hilarious but... that he says, well, Toho Kingdom is not an official site, because he's talking to the frigging admin of Toho Kingdom as a whole, like the, the president, the frigging CEO. So I think it's hilarious, and I cannot, <laughs> I cannot wait to see how this... I almost want to leave it just to see how it goes out. I also want... Oh, I also want to interfere. There's that part of me that wants to go in. There's another part of me that wants to not say anything. Just let that play out and see how long it goes. By the time we get to the, uh, by the time we get to the uh, what you call it, the committee reads version of that, because we'll be reading the comments for the things when we do the committee reads version. That's so, gonna take a year. as as Alex said, Godzilla fans are kind of dumb. Like Star Wars fans. Well, wouldn't this be Ultraman fans? This, yeah, this is an Ultraman fan. Oh, uh, no, I mean, Toho. Look at the Birdman. <laughs> Man, Birdman getting bad rap over here because of people like Roman Killsberg. I like how he calls War Gilgar an Ultraman kaiju. Uh, he Clown. Uh, Ultraman uh, ripoff kaiju. They even well. use ripoff Ko Choju, War Gilgar. Oh yeah, by the way, that, that makes an S sound in his name, so it's Kiesling. Oh, Kiesling, okay. Uh, Kiesling. Alright. Either way, basically clowning, Roman clowning. Yes, he, uh, he, he'd definitely be a clown. <laughs> yes. You dropped your clown license, buddy. <laughs> Nevertheless, I just wanted to... <laughs> I just Can I just hear Pokemon? <laughs> wait, 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 I forgot to silence my phone. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, you have the Pokemon ring. Nice, I approve of that. Okay, but sorry, continue. All right, but yeah, no, I think I just wanted to share that bit of gold. See how that uh, evolves. Whether or not Tyler intervenes, whether or not I intervene, whether or not it just continues to unfold in the madness of a man of one man trying to explain why to an ignorant brick wall. Anyway. I'll probably go in and explain, but yes, for those that, again, don't know, we don't, we only use Toho-based properties for the KWC because in the past, Toho has contacted the KWC, uh, has contacted us and been like, hey, and we've had discussions with them, and this is basically why we have KWC matches how we do. <laughs> yes, this is why we kind of run things have... the way we do. This is why... Or yep. we still have the Toho Monster Wrestling Federation. Yeah, exa exactly why it's not the Toho Monster Wrestling Federation. Exactly. So. <clears throat> you know what? KDBC is just a much better name anyway, both as an anime. Yeah, I, I, was, I was about to say that KWC just sounds better. Mm -hmm. So. One of the few times where Toho's intervention has made a product a lot better. Nevertheless. Uh, I'm just kidding. They're actually playing a ton for Toho's intervention turned a project for the better. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but they're there. All right, so now we are on. We are done with the first half. We have the KWCs taken care of, but now we migrate on to the second half of this podcast discussion. Half of KWC, and that is the KWC East. Yes, we have returned in full force, full flavor. Uh, the biggest difference. You face did, right did anyone else just feel everything shake? That, that was yeah, I, I. He he base boosted. 
Yes, I base boosted times 100. Uh, Shit, <laughs> his power level is rising. <laughs> he spelled his name wrong. <laughs> That's a good start. Wait, where? Hilly Hulk. Oh, I did? Oh, it was it two L's? Two L's. <laughs> oh, dang it. That's a good start, isn't it? Yeah, way to go, nerd. How, how could you mess up something so basic in regards to a writer's name? All right, so uh, like, just, you know, just mess... refresh the page. It's fixed. Uh... Darn it. That's still faster than me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, but no. I forgot to get a screenshot. Aha, uh -huh, now you can no longer prove me unless I undo it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, into... No. Yeah, to the KWCE. We have returned with KWCEs. They are back. With that said... I am going to stress this. They are coming back in once a month fold. However, we are, we are also in the middle of a KWCE Monster Month event. Uh, March of the Baragon. So that part is currently ongoing. It's about halfway done. And we got two more matches to be posted after, after this discussion. So expect another three KWCEs for next month's discussion. And then after that... You know, uh, a after that's done, we'll be resuming back to one one a month. So, because I w really did want to kind of keep it slow, keep it steady, and call it good. Uh, but with that said, we will go over the first KWCE of the new year after a much long-awaited anticipation. We have Cretaceous King Ghidorah versus Godzilla Saurus, set on Yakushima Island, written by Hilly Hulk. I'm gonna go from top to bottom. Bacon, what'd you think of it? I thought that it was an interesting way to show the beginning of the Godzilla Ghidorah relationship and the motive for Godzilla Saurus actually having some like weight to it. Um, I thought it was a pretty entertaining fight in itself, and I like that it ended in a draw. Yeah, that, that's about it. All right. Uh, Greyshark, did you read Match 51, Cretaceous King Ghidorah vs. Godzilla Source, by chance? I have not read it, uh, to be quite honest, uh, but looking at it makes me very ma look Looking at it does not does not bring up confidence, mm. I, I, I will say. I, I, again, based on judgment, but my note would be Grand King Ghidorah. I'm guessing this is Cretaceous Crete King Ghidorah? It is, it's in the title of the actual thing, Cretaceous King Ghidorah. In which case, if this thing ends with any other way but an absolute curb stomp, then I will, uh, then I will be just, then I'll take a look at it now, but <laughs> while you guys go through it. But my note is, uh, as I stress this again, Godzilla Saurus got beat by artillery guns, like from a ship, so, and he died from them. So, Cretaceous King Ghidorah, who is on par with Rainbow Mothra, should wipe the floor with this Godzilla source. But Tyler, stat boost. Anyway. That doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not objective. This is why, we, why we got rid of also, him in the KWC. <laughs> a deck of cards, you know, a house of cards, supersized is still a house of cards. It's still flimsy. Remember, guys. We had Godzilla Source, but we can't have Mothra, Lil, Larva, or Manila in the KWC, even though they're more combat efficient. That is yeah. objectively true. Like, no. If Godzilla actually- like, for instance, everyone's like, oh, but the Mothras beat Godzilla. If Godzilla actually got his claws on one of the Mothras, they were gone. Well, no, that, that's- No, that's I'm talking their... about Mothra, Lil, Larva, the one that actually has a chest beam he could camouflage. And actually got hit by Descador's moves. I'm pretty confident. Yeah, he yeah. did, and then he ran away. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't also, run away. No, he didn't run away. His mother grabbed him. Yeah, his mother took him away. He yeah, sorry, he flew away with parental <laughs> vision, parental supervision. Again, he didn't fly away. Someone just grabbed him and ran. He was still willing to fight. Right, right. If, if Mothra hadn't taken him, he would have kept fighting, and probably would have lost. Also, but you know, he would have kept fighting. My, 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 my point still stands. No, Cretaceous King Ghidorah, even against buffed Godzilla Saurus. Well, still okay, uh, with, in that case, whatever. For you, get out of here. Awesome. <laughs> Great shot. He didn't die. He just got thrown into a different time era. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, Godzilla Saurus didn't die, but he got knocked, he, he got knocked down. He was yeah, bleeding. he got knocked out of time. But nevertheless, 
Uh, well, therefore, his death never occurred. Right, his death never occurred. You are absolutely. Oh, hey, God. Well, he still died in '95. Oh yeah, you're right. This is. He did die in '95. Oh, what were you gonna say, Nagoda? It sounded like you were gonna say something. Oh, I said I didn't realize your location was on Godzilla Earth. No wonder why you're always glitching out. Yep. Uh, yeah, t telecasting all this from 20,000 years in the future is pretty difficult. So. Also, also Godzilla's source is cringe because he's from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't Cretaceous King Ghidorah also be cringe for because he's also from the 90s? Exactly. Yeah, but he's from a really, really bad film. I mean... You can hey, uh, listen, since you're from the future, can you just let us know how this thing called the coronavirus turns out? We greatly appreciate I, Not that we're worried here in the present timeline, I, but we'd really yeah, be helpful. Like I mean, I tried looking. I mean, I tried looking into it. I don't have any information on it, so I don't know what that says. The, hi the, the history was all lost. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you guys want to head to Mega Godzilla City to prevent us from getting the coronavirus? <laughs> oh, dude, epic! <laughs> <laughs> it's the logical thing to do, anyway. Uh, so yeah, just just surrender your humanity. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Actually, here's a funny thing I kind of noticed in City after rewatching it a month ago. What? It, it didn't seem like anyone lost their free will or anything. It seemed like they were still... Kind of themselves. I mean... Yeah, they were still kind of themselves. Right, it's hard to say that because they were the Bill of Saludo who were willing to... I think the Bill of Saludo would have had the best advantage because of their mentality. Uh, it It's hard to say because it's like yeah, it seemed. It, yeah, it didn't seem like anything too bad happened. It didn't seem like Mechagodzilla assumed. Or, well, no, it kind of did because that's when. Yeah, when the Beale Saludo gave their bodies, that's when it became let's absorb everything. You know, screw. I mean, they, they did make the, that nano metal, so it wouldn't really affect them like it would the humans. Just, it did. No, but. All the humans. Turns out Mechagodzilla was the good guy in that one. Like, hey guys, you actually have some problems. I'm just going to help you. You're going to retain your consciousness. Everyone else, kill it with fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because just just in the context of the movie, that's what it looked like. They still got to keep their conscience. Right, right. They were still like, they still had a certain degree. I think there was a slight shift because I think the Beale Saluto gave their bodies for extra processing power to Mechagodzilla. Uh... And they had no intent. I don't think they had intentions of assimilating the humans. Only those who were willing uh, at first. But then when when they got assimilated, that's when it became oh nobody has an option because the film did not show the other humans being assimilated. We are only ever told that they were assimilated forcefully. At, at, at most, I could see Mechagas all only repressing their need to try to self-sabotage or yeah, but... speak actively against it. Right, sure which could have been the case. But... Very well. mm -hmm. Right, right. I mean, the human brain is a really good computer, so... Oh, yeah. So... But, nevertheless, uh... Wait, uh... Oh, yeah, Alex, what'd you think of Match 51? Did you read it? I didn't read it. Oh, okay, that, that makes it easy, then. Alright, uh... I like... I can understand where Grayshaw comes from from a more, I guess, objective stance where the match is like, obvious. any match featuring Godzilla's source, even with something like Cretaceous King Ghidorah, should just be, wipe the floor, you're dead. But I don't think that's uh. the point. Uh, the ultimate point of this match is more so, t it's a unique, I think it was something Bacon said way earlier. It's a unique way it's of giving Godzilla and King Ghidorah their term their eternal nemesis relationship where that starts where that begins and I think in that sense it does a good job uh, regardless of how you look at it objectively I think it does a good job at sort of conveying those feelings of this is where it all began you know so yeah. long ago Godzilla and King Ghidorah became nemesis and, they, and their kinds have been so ever since in that sense, I think the match does a good job with that. And keeping that in mind, yeah, I think it's conveyed nicely within sort of like their ability set and whatnot. So, say what you will, that was my interpretation of it, and that's why I kind of enjoy. That's why I enjoyed, it, and that's why I, you know, uh, posted it there. Uh, yeah, I don't. I didn't have too much to say with this one, but it does have like you know. The core idea is really good, and I liked it a lot. So, uh, Nagoto, what'd you think of Cretaceous King Ghidorah versus uh, Godzilla Source? Uh, 
I was hoping you would say, what would you, what did you think of Match 51? <laughs> <laughs> and then you would start describing back versus everyone, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. Dig Anyways, <laughs> uh, This was a really interesting thing because it, it actually goes into detail why these two species hate each other. Also, it gave me an idea. It also gave me ideas for another Godzilla versus King Ghidorah match, where you use the Dimension Tide to throw them into another Godzilla versus King Ghidorah match. Hmm. Hmm. So it'd be Godzilla and Godzilla versus King Ghidorah and King Ghidorah. Oh my goodness. Round two, <laughs> or not round two, just another one of those, but with better story this time. Hey. But. But Nagoda, the one you wrote is my favorite match. <laughs> but the one I, but that that is technically Grace Shots rewrite. Okay, well then the one you both did is my favorite match. <laughs> the point is, you were still involved, Nagoda. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was your match. I just I just added a few little things there. You just fixed up all the plot details and just I fi I, yes i fixed the plot quote unquote <laughs> he fixed the plot <laughs> uh joe did you read match 51 cretaceous king Ghidorah versus godzilla source i don't know why but i just laughed when you said <laughs> did you did he did he really okay god he didn't read it all right so that'll, that'll okay so that'll transition quickly from here to there, as we venture on to the first match of March of the Baragons, a, a KWCE uh, Monster Month that you know features Baragon-like creatures ranging from like you know the many Ultraman Baragon thief stealers or Baragon's cousins, uh, Baragon himself, uh, Sea Baragon, you know all those crazy guys. And the first guy we have in this first match we have in this lineup of the two that are currently out. Are Gyra Showa versus Sea Baragon in Flying Ebera, set on Amnia Island from Jaws? And we'll start from the top. Bacon, what'd you think of it? Okay. I really like this match. The references to Jaws are done well. They don't seem forced. Like, uh, I thought that the match itself was nice. It was nice seeing Sea Baragon and Gyra, the sons of Bar Baragon, and. Frankenstein fighting. Uh, Flying Ebro was a nice touch. You don't really need him to convey with the story, but it's still nice to see him get used. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Yeah, I, I just, I really enjoyed the match. So. Alright. It's a good... All right, no, that's good. Uh, Grayshot, did you read Gyra versus Sea Baragon and Flying Ebera? I'll be quite honest, I didn't read any of the KWCs. Honest. Please, uh, but... Alex is here, you know, you have to remember the word we don't say around here. <laughs> word that must not be named. Every time you what? say that word, you're getting kicked in the nuts. <laughs> that's what it feels like. Damn, that's a lot. Uh, but no, um... I do like the idea in regards to using the plot for Amityville, and the monsters are very unique, considering the fact that at one point some of these monsters almost were added to uh, the KWC. Almost. Spe specifically the Sea Baragon. Sea Baragon, yeah. Yep. Which is a bit of a bummer, but, you know, at the same time, I could also partially see why. Partially. Uh, but, yeah, very good. So he's got stuff going for him, and I think this match. Well, I, I don't want to get into my opinion or my opinion just yet because I did have I do have a bit to say. Uh, but yeah, no, I definitely see a certain appeal of C. Baragon that would have been neat, but you know, oh well. <laughs> yep, but no. Regardless, um, also flying Abra. That is a <laughs> I forgot about that monster. <laughs> <laughs> right. The flying shrimp. Uh, but, uh, no, yeah. Um, I like the setting. I like the monsters. If I were a betting man, I'd probably place more money on Ga uh, Gaira. Uh, Gaira. But regardless, uh, my, my, my butts aside, uh, yeah. <laughs> All I gotta say about that. Alright. Uh, Alex, what'd you think of Match 52? 
I didn't read it, but you're all welcome because Joe and I saved Flying Ebra okay. from being retired. Yeah, pretty much. I think uh, like their inclusion in the uh, friggin' parody thing, I sort of you know, pre pretty much forced me, hey, we need these for this. And it's like, okay. And yeah, surprisingly, the fact that there's another match featuring them, I guess, just proves that they, at least in the KWCE front, they have staying power. So it's like, all right, cool. I do not mind that. Joe, yeah. Yeah, Joe and I saved him saved them with a fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright. But yeah, uh I enjoy like I enjoyed the match, but the original version I got was a little rough. I'm glad you I'm glad to hear to say that the reference kind of uh references to Jaws uh like came through very naturally because the first version had a lot more going on that didn't feel natural uh there was a lot of stuff that just didn't feel right it didn't seem right and as i read the match more and more i all I, I almost omitted all the references altogether but then i read the climax of it i was like okay so this is building up to something so i decided to keep some of them uh, like, there were two points... With, I think there were, like, two points in the fight where two different sharks attack the monsters. Like, one during the fight and one in the middle... Uh, at the end of the fight. And it was like, that was a little much. That seemed excessive and unneeded. I think the first time was enough to get the point across. When Gyra eats Jaws? Yes. I think that was already a fine bit... Yeah, there were two other points where I think there was a point where a shark bit Sea Baragon, which gave which distracted Sea Baragon long enough for Gyra to uh, attack. I changed that bit up, and then there was at the way end when Sea Baragon won, where another shark attacked him. It was like they just seemed unneeded. When I felt like at least, especially in the case where the shark attacked, shark attacked Sea Baragon long enough for Gyra to attack again. I felt like that could have just been like, okay, Gyra now gets the upper hand back. Uh, and so I changed it to so, and I think it works better better for it. So, and I think, so I am kind of glad I kept the references in there, but there were absolutely, there were more references in here that I cut. I think to get, to put a number to that, the current word count is 3,442. Add about like 500 extra words, and that would that was part of the original. I cut out like 500 words between some of the rewording and cutting out of certain uh, sequences. So there was a little more here, uh, but it, it needed to be trimmed. Well, I'm glad you did because the match itself that it is now is quite good. All right, awesome. Whew. Wow, if only Rise of Skywalker had an editor. Uh, if the if the Rise of Skywalker had B, it would have been competent. If the Rise of Skywalker had an editor, maybe I wouldn't hate Star Wars as much now. If I were in charge of the sequel trilogy, things wouldn't have gone as bad. I mean, hey, can you yeah. Do you hate women and minorities because you hate the new Star Wars movies? <laughs> the answer may surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, by the way. It's no, which is the surprising part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I do have to say, I really, like, the fighting stuff was solid. Uh, again, touching up was needed to better enunciate it. But I have to say, my favorite element was the parallel. Like, the son of Frankenstein versus the son of Baragon. That's awesome. I, I really love that. Love that element. It gives a nice... Like I said, Flying Ebro wasn't needed, and I think even the uh, Venom 2009 stated that, like, Flying Ebro was a bit of a last-second addition. Uh, which I don't mind. I didn't mind too much. Like, he's very much... I could have taken him out and wouldn't have mattered, but, uh... Nevertheless, uh, like, you know, friggin', uh... It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a nice little surprise appearance. So, like, Sea Bear... Uh, Flying Ebera is Megalon to Sea Baragon's Gigan, in a sense. There's a weird... There's a very weird, uh, dual... There's a very weird, like, you know, like, kinship between those two. You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to start writing Baragon Ebera team ups just to reference these two knuckleheads. Uh, Why would 
Pepper a team up with such a shitty kaiju? Great question. I'll f I'm a gamer. I'll figure it out. <laughs> the answer will not surprise me. <laughs> <sighs> but nevertheless, yeah, I, yeah, this like it took it was a bit of a hassle to edit, much like the next one, except a little less so. But uh, I think it still had a solid enough premise and you know fun references to the original for to Jaws for anyone to enjoy. So it's like all right, that's cool. Uh, Nagoda, did you read Match Fifty Two? Uh, I read it while we were starting this thing, so okay. it was fun. I like how Be how Baragon actually managed to beat Gyra. Oh, a Baragon finally managed to beat a Frankenstein, so that's nice. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm checking to make sure you spelled the name right this time. Good. But yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, did you have anything else to say, Nagoda? Or you, you good? That's all. Okay. Uh, and Joe, did you happen to read Match Fifty Two by Happenstance like, at all, or nah? <laughs> ah, you did. It burns my soul. Anyway, and the last KWCE for the night. Uh, before we talk on about other things like G Ultra Star God Grand Caesar. Uh, anyway, we are now yeah. migrating on to Match 53, Godzilla 2001 versus Baragon 2001, Showa Angiris and Showa Veron, set in Yokohama, Japan, written by Tyrant Goji, who, I believe this is their first match on the KWCE front. Uh, so... We'll go from top to bottom again. Bacon, what'd you think of it? Okay, first, this isn't on the match, it's on the card. Why isn't it Baragon Millennium? Uh, because I have split... Because I in included the scrapped version of 2001 in here as well. And while it wouldn't have been wrong to call him Millennium, I felt like calling him 2001 was just a little more appropriate in this case. Okay. I plan on remodifying the King Ghidorah into 2001 King Ghidorah as well, despite being the only Millennium one. So, just to be consistent with the others. Okay, okay. Well, now for actual criticism to the match. Um, it was alright. There's there's a part in which it's like Angiris and Varen are blasted with the atomic breath for like six minutes straight. And I kind of took Ah, uh, yeah. That kind of took me... Yeah. It it did not feel necessary. It kind of just felt like... By that time, they would have both been dead. Yes. Let's be real. Oh, uh -huh, right. No way... So, yeah, see, I don't know how or why I missed that. Son of a... Uh, hang on a second. Uh... It's, like, in the beginning of the middle segment, I think. Um, as a, like, I guess, sequel for GMK, it works. It's not the best match, but... Oh, it, fixed. It... <laughs> Epic! <laughs> it, it does its job. I like how they referenced the, Mo the Guardian Anguirus and Varen, but they accidentally woke up the wrong versions. Um... Ah, oh, crud, that's why I've forgotten the Baragon card. I'm gonna have to re- I'm gonna have to fix that. Oh, well. Uh, but, yeah. Oh, as you were saying, as you were saying. Out of the two matches for the March of the Baragons, the first one's definitely the better written. Hmm. Um, at least personally, I think it flows much better as a story. It doesn't have as much points that took- It didn't take me out as with this one, it did. Hmm. I could see that. I could see that. Um. But hey, GMK. So that's epic. So it gets kind of a pass. <laughs> Alright. 
Uh, and I'll be having the banner by, uh, what was his name? Uh, GMK Goji up here. Ah, huh, GMK, look at that. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the banner's all right, too. Yeah, well, like, the banner he made is uh, a little lackluster, but I don't know what program. I think he uses a different program, so. Yeah. Who? Yeah, it's this squish, too. That Ferris wheel's not a circle. Who? Uh, point being, who? Anyway. Who? <laughs> who? A GMK Goji. He's on the forums. He's trying who? to make banners. Who? He can do it one day. Your mom? Your mother. Damn! <laughs> really gonna bring out that z a bitch of an ex-wife, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. The fucking zillion that t won't let Alex have to go to his uh, fucking rights. I see how it is, huh? <laughs> Attacking my homie like that. Anyway, uh, Grey Shot, what'd you think of Match 53? Uh, did you read it by chance, or...? Grey Shot? Ray Shot's fucking dead. <laughs> Sorry, I did not read it. Okay, fair enough. That'll just make it easier to ask if Alex didn't read it. Though I did, I will say, I am looking at the banner that the gentleman did make, and yes, I do agree. That would not have made it to the KWC, so I can understand why your standards uh, would not have used it. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, KWC, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, I, I am probably going to use it just because it saves me time. So, <laughs> saves me time in post. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. So, Alex, what'd you think of it? What are we doing? <laughs> Talking about the match. Oh, what match? Godzilla versus Baragon, <laughs> Angus, and Veron, because it's a reference, even though we now have those versions of the characters here. Anyway. Is this for the KWC or KWCE? KWCE. No, it's for the uh, movie. Uh, okay, what's that? <laughs> Oh, you're asking if I read it. No. Okay. <laughs> no, GVJ, we're talking about if you've seen the movie GMK. <laughs> Alex is going senile. I, I haven't seen it, but I've seen a movie called GAV. <laughs> Alex, no, he can't go senile. It's not possible. Search your wounds. You know it to be true. <laughs> nah, I'm just... It's been seen how old feel for the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to take your taxes, huh? Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all right. Uh, but yeah, with this match in particular, yeah, I think even the author kind of agreed this wasn't their better ones, and I do have to say it's a little, it's a little lacking in terms of the vocabulary, and I did, I did, I, I didn't want to do an overhaul of this one. So it's like you know, uh, like again, I don't I don't like doing complete overhauls of matches, but I do like you know, just tr just trying to make it up to standard. But uh, it's like yeah, so there were some parts that felt forced. Let me put it this way: I did make some improvements by changing up some of the language because some of it did seem kind of like teenage angst. So I was like, ah oh, boy. So you know, I did change it around some. Uh, ju just to be clear, so this was one I did like go back through, and make a considerable edit uh, effort to edit. Surprisingly, like not too bad on the uh, grammar front. I'm kind of because usually with a lot of the beginners, they have the grammar issue up up the other side. But this one, I actually didn't have too much of a problem with on that area. It was just more of the vocabulary, or you know, the lack thereof. Like it was a little too little too simple and maybe a little bit too much teenage angst but to its credit the grammar was all right i didn't have there was not too much of an issue with that one so i was like i'm so yeah i am genuinely shocked and it does make me look forward to reading more tyrant goji matches because it's like oh thank gosh grammar's not too much of an issue i have to worry about at least from this one uh but i did have to revise Actually, I did go through a bit of substantial revisions just to meet up with the new... Because uh, this match had been written when Baragon was still merged as one character. I have since split Baragon into two characters between the Showa and 2001 versions. So, I kind of needed something. 
and I, uh, yeah, I kind of needed to, uh, uh, like, I just needed to change it up to accommodate. So I only changed it up where I needed to in this particular case. That's it, I will say. I think I probably took a little overboard with how I handled Baragon's superheatedness, but it was just to simply maintain the spirit of the original, where it was like, oh, GMK Baragon now has a fire breath. Or in the or that was the case, the original version, so I just wanted to emulate that effect. When I feel like, objectively speaking, it probably was just Baragon was like a miniature burning Godzilla, where he was just really hot. Uh... So, no fancy wind powers or nothing. That was a complete mistake on my part somehow. Uh, should have given it another go. Nevertheless, uh, it's all right. Yeah, it looked like the fight is all right. I did change that one thing, which I don't know why I didn't immediately just get to that. Why did I not? I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, I know the answer. I wasn't thinking. Uh, Honesty. Yes. Honesty. Yeah, it's honesty, not honestly. Take that, Alex. <laughs> I kind of zoned. Wild. Joe says I kind of zoned out. And did Kaiju X call Baragon hot? <laughs> Take blast, Joe. You disgust. Me. <laughs> uh, it's not what it's not what it looks like. <laughs> that Baragon lovers and people who say shit like honesty and honestly and truthfully deserve to get kicked <laughs> in the nuts. Uh, you suck. Oh dear gosh. Oh, anyway, but yeah, I. It's an all right match. It's not a perfect match. It's still very much a starters match. I think it still meets the criteria needed given how flexible the KWC generally is. But, you know, it's still... I still know there are many rooms to be... many areas to be improved, and that will all, all come with time, so... Anyway. Uh, Nagoda, did you read Match 53? Uh, it was interesting. Baragon died again. Like how, instead of just leaving the heart there, they actually... Oh, wait. Actually, hold on a second. Yeah, they uh, he pulled the Baragon. Yeah. Wait. wait. Angaris pulled the Baragon. He ate the heart. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, is, so does that mean that Angaris is gonna turn into Godzilla now? <laughs> I don't think so. That shouldn't be the issue. <laughs> I, I mean, Vagin was apparently soul eating Vagin in that match, <laughs> and this is a soul inhabited Godzilla. So same thing. But but Nagoda, you forgot one thing. Baggins OP. So is Godzilla every once in a while. But Baggins more OP. He is brute strength. He's all power. <laughs> okay, Broly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then going to the the banner could uh, needs a lot of work on that banner. He's he's right. learning. He's uh, that's all yeah, I have to say. Learning. He's learning. Just, that splash, I can see it multiple times in the same spot, just shifted down a bit. <laughs> uh, the exact same splash, too. Yep, mm -hmm, yep. I see it, too, man. I see it, too. And reflected to the other side, where Godzilla is. Yep. Mm -hmm. You see the techniques, especially when you uh, like work with this... Especially with banners, it's like you recognize the techniques. You recognize their trademarks. You recognize what PNGs they use, because they're lazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, look, my tactics aren't that late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 do you have anything else? Oh, oh yeah. All right, uh, looks like uh, Bacon has something to add on. What'd you have? Uh, sorry to interrupt. This is, like, out of context as hell, but uh, since all of the Millennium Godzilla's besides 2001 and Final Wars are on the same card, the IDW... Mm -hmm. Kiryu Saga, Mega Gears in 2000. It is it cool if I give the IDW Godzilla's powers to 2000? Yeah, ba basically when they're on that card, they basically share the same powers unless it's like a different form. Oh gosh. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know if like that was okay or not. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, I forgot I had the phone down here. I'm sorry if you heard that, but I'm glad I didn't say anything. Son of a. 
Yeah, I heard it. Oh, the return of your phone. It's, it's, uh, it's not my personal phone, mind you, but, uh, uh gosh. I know, but the return of the ringtone. <laughs> so, so unprofessional. I mean, <laughs> golly gee. What am I, Rich Evans? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Who? Red Letter Media. Watch their stuff. They're funny. Anyway. You know. Uh... You will notice uncanny parallels if you stick around them long enough. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, uh Nico, did you have anything else to say or? Uh, not really. No. Okay. Uh, Joe, uh, what'd you think of Match Fifty Three? Did you have a chance to read it or not on the radar? He's gonna say no. <laughs> I didn't read it. Fuck you. <laughs> Jake blasted. But, yep. Okay. And there concludes all the KDBCs and KDBCEs. I am personally really happy we're firing all cylinders with both. Really, I kind of am happy that just all of it's coming back. Sure, that means that these things just last longer when we want to get to the fun post-KDBC discussion stuff, but it's still nice to be able to go over these after... Real after so long too. My goodness, it's it's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, so, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, shoot. Oh gosh. So welcome to the post discussion, post KWC discussion phase of the thing. Uh, Gray shot. Did you have any particular announcements to make? Because I don't think I had anything on the table. Aside from Grand Caesars. Uh, for the KWC? Um, not really. I mean, we did post the survey. Right. That was something that was done this month. Right, and I do believe we have the, we have tallied the final results. Uh, there were a couple of changes I noticed. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, one in particular that I recalled was, uh, uh yeah, best use of a new monster slash form in which that went to the legendary trio when I think Shin Godzilla was winning last, or was tied with them last we checked. It... Let me pull, let me pull it up. Um, Shin was better used. Shin was in... Uh, Shin, I, I, I think I said if you would split it, uh, then he would have had it. But let me pull this up. Um, Results... Yeah, the... Shin, I think, ha did deserve the win. Um, but in regards to actual votes, right. the best use of new form... Yeah, it was... Yeah, by 26... Uh, yeah, by 36%, it was uh, the Moth... It was the Legendary Trio. And then by 34%, it was Godzilla Bray Okay. Right. Okay. Yep. Actually, I have a question. Yes. I have an answer. Um... How are we gonna handle King Cobra with banners? Uh, that he has gray, gray shot. I think you say you had a 3D modeler in mind. There will uh, submit your matches. Uh, currently, we are in the process. Uh, uh, we are. I shouldn't say in the process, but we are. We realize that there is no banner at the moment, but trust me when I say you can use the monster. At a certain point, something trust will be usable. Me. Trust me on this. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> Come on, guys. You know, I mean, think about who you're talking to. I mean, trust me on this one. It's Gray Shot. Yeah, trust okay, it, I'll say that. <laughs> Is it just me, or did he sound like Kronk there for a second? Just trust me. <laughs> just trust me. No. <laughs> so, just trust me. You're gonna get to I refuse the, to. The whole version of the Mandalorian. Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll get into that later. Like, that's part of the whole Grand Caesar thing. So we'll get to that as soon as Grayshot goes over. I guess whatever. Whatever. Yep. Oh, um, but, um... Mandalorian. No, yeah, so... Nikoda uh, speaking. What? <laughs> but, no, in regards to the actual survey results, yeah, those were also posted in the current month. And if you want to go check them out, uh, you definitely can on the... Uh, Ooh, it looks like the link I'll have provided huh. in the description below because you know people yeah. need to check descriptions again. Yep, uh, we won't. I won't go into all the winners and losers for that. You can check out check it out on Toe Kingdom. But the major notes, I guess, the things I should say that weren't uh, said when we were going it over 
on the uh, podcast last time was that yes, Behemoth, Mothra Millennium, slash the Tokyo SOS Final Wars variant, Mito Prime, Kushin Muba, The Visitor, and King Cobra are all greenlit for the KWC. Go right ahead. Uh, the thing I will say is for uh, the KWC retirees, just as a confirmation, King Ghidorah Hesai, Mothra Hesai, Spyler, and Willard Gilgar will be leaving um, sooner rather than later. Yes. Uh, last but not least, we do have the, the thing that I don't think was mentioned last time, though, was the winner. Oh, of yeah, that's the... right. The survey match winner request. That's right. Yep. Yes, I chose. So I did a little bit because there were. So to those curious as to how this was chosen, uh, I went through every all the requests. And I basically, I did have to eliminate those that we couldn't do. There were a lot of people that submitted matches for monsters that we that are not in the KWC in the slightest. Yes. So those I did have to remove um, because they just weren't feasible, mm -hmm. long story short. Um, with that in mind, uh, yeah, I, um, with that in mind, I still went through and updated everything uh i i uh then i went through and i basically did a random number generator and might i say this one was the most epic one in regards to in regards to matches i think this is going to be a hell of a good way to end the uh, month or end the year uh because it's looking to be like an end of year kind of match because again we do uh i've given it to a i won't spoil the writer but or writers but we do have a few people working on this one, and I'm excited with how the pre-production is going. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That Alan Smithy guy sounds like a good writer. <laughs> yes. We got the writer of Godzilla vs. Charles Barkley? <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> and hit films like Hellraiser 4? And The Dude. Birds 2? Pog! Oh, gosh. We're getting Tommy Busso. Sadly, no Tommy Busso. But yes, Big Ann versus King Ghidorah Legendary should be hitting uh, late 2020. All right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess, I mean, the banner's prepared. I had made the banner. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, waiting on it. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, uh,. <laughs> But yeah, uh, but yeah, like you know, yeah, Baggy versus King Ghidorah Legendary is currently uh, currently in the works, and that will be released for later in the year. So if you have a, a request, uh, just make sure to submit it when the KDBC, which is uh, in the awards or in the feedback, or the surveys, when the surveys come around again next year. Just ask for what you want, and we shall deliver. Yep. Uh, depending on how this turns out, I might do the request again. Uh, I might limit it to make your, like, a versus, like, a two or three monster kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Because there were some that were, like... Uh, here, let me pull up an example. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, we had... Because it was, like, there were... I was trying to be, like, oh, yeah, just do a match. I didn't really specify in regards to, like... Bit, yeah, which probably be yeah. a good idea. I'd say three, maybe four. I think four would be all right. Yeah, because... Uh, no, everyone matches, please. Yeah, I know. Oh gosh, that's the big thing. Oh, there were those. There were a few of those. Um, we should ban them. Yes. Where feedback survey summary? Here we go. Um. Okay. So, for instance, we had. Uh, please list your. We did have smaller ones like Godzilla versus Black Moth. Ooh. Um. Maguma versus King Kong. Hmm. Uh, Zetan versus uh, King Joe versus La Tierra. I don't know what that translates to. Uh, I know two of the two or three of those. But then we had stuff like uh, Godzilla 2004 versus Mothra Leo versus Akusagami versus Gamma Hesai versus King Ghidorah 2001 versus uh, Godzilla Earth versus Destroya. Versus Grand King Ghidorah versus Orochi versus Iris versus again Godzilla. Two, oh no, sorry. This time it's just Godzilla 2001 versus Big Ann. Oh my gosh! Fuck. Uh, we had oh Shin God. Godzilla versus everyone. <laughs> um. Oh, you mean like? Oh, you mean like in the parody match? <laughs> yes. Uh, Godzilla versus Gamera versus Kong versus Mothra. Uh, oh, sorry. Godzilla, Gamera, Kong, Mothra, and Ultraman versus Destroya, Space Godzilla, King Ghidorah, and Iris. 
Um, a total Godzilla battle royale, every single version combined with Space Godzilla and all the Mecha Godzillas thrown at each other. Oh god. Um, Iris and Gauss multiple versus Muto Prime uh, versus M Mutos. I guess that one's actually not too That's bad. A, that one's actually not too bad. You know what? That that one actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> that one sounds good. The next one, Godzilla Earth versus Megiddo, uh versus Shin Godzilla. Uh, that was a... uh, yeah, that's not possible. Uh, Godzilla Hesai and Greer Showa, Rodan Hesai, or Legendary, Jet Jaguar, King Kong, Legendary, Kiryu, and Cyber Godzilla versus Mechanic Kong, Baragon, Kamunga, Titanosaurus, Mechagodzilla, Bagora, Godzilla, Rewa. Uh huh. It would be connected to the Tom Zil- uh, Zilla series and serve as a conclusion of sorts. Wait, really? That was the request? Yes. What the heck? Huh. Yeah, people, I mean, people do make requests. Uh, I knew everyone versus everyone could be awesome. Began being introduced in the Cataclysm universe from match 175. I think he means 275. I think he meant 275. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, people are also asking for like some uh, like connections, which honestly, understandable. Um, like uh, there was this one with Godzilla oh, SI, Zilla, Zone Fighter, and Ultra 7 versus Orochi. Maybe it could tie with the end of Black Moth versus Maguma where Moth, Black Moth finds Orochi. Oh, yeah, totally. You know what? And I'm pretty sure this is tied to my series because of the monsters involved. Oh. Huh. Interesting. But then we also had some weird ones like Dice Sizar versus Bosquito versus Destroya. Oh, gosh. Uh, Grand Caesar discussion. Oh, lordy. <laughs> Yeah, but no, again, uh, so long story short, we've had a lot of requests like those, and those, while interesting, simply are too long, and of the smaller ones that we did see, because we did receive plenty of smaller ones too, like Godzilla Legendary versus Griffin, uh, with even like a note of, Godzilla wins, please. (laughs) No, he will Uh, lose. Which, to be fair, I, I if I if I ever did write that, I would have it end with Godzilla slicing him to pieces with the spines. Oh I mean, that's yeah, just that like, is a sick way to go. Uh, to be yeah. fair, so yeah, can, with, basically, if you would imagine, imagine how the mutant coming out, instead of whacking his tail, he just bent over and just sliced them up, sliced it to that pieces. That's the sickest way to die. <laughs> I you mean, guys, it, uh that match were to ever happen, could you make a reference to the Atlantean Godzilla from that script, so then it could be that from Legendary's Godzilla image, they made that. Are you going to reference that version of Godzilla? I think that's... Uh, referencing that Godzilla is fine, in the same way that referencing Showa Godzilla is fine. Because that version of Godzilla is connected to the Griffin. Uh, on a, on an objective level, naturally. So. Object, just objectively speak. Objectively speak. Uh, does it matter which Godzilla skeleton we put in Kiryu? Because we had one where it was Heisei and Kiryu. Uh, I think there is a I, limit. Uh, there, I will say there. I would say it should be limited to either fifty-four or Heisei. I per, that's my personal. Uh, I don't want it to be Reiwa. I don't want it to be legendary. I feel Heisei and uh, he, uh, Heisei and fifty-four you? would be the best bets. So, and, and that's me being lenient. That is me being lenient. <laughs> so that's a no to show a dead show Godzilla skeleton in Kiryu. Oh, since it's basically the same structure. I guess Showa would would Showa be all right? I guess. Uh, that's that's a weird one. I mean, that's a weird. I, I think we killed Grayshot. Uh, Grayshot. Grayshot. Our- Sorry, him. my mic was muted. Continue. Uh, no, Nagoda is asking if we can use Showa God like. Like, okay, when it comes to... let me. Oh, it. using it in Kiryu is like the skin? The skeleton. Oh. Sk- like The skeleton. Uh, it's... it's the same structure. I, it's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the same... Like, that... Listen, it's the same structure. It's close enough, right? right? And then we've also had matches where Heisei Godzilla's come out of the Kiryu, Kiryu 2... Uh, uh, I'm not, not going to take it that. Right, right. I know. I, I know mean, it's not going to be taken that far. I hope it doesn't take like as long as it's not taken that far. You're all right. Uh, in my eyes, in my eyes. I. I would say, I. I in, 
I guess you don't have too much of a problem with it. Right, right. Because as long as you make note of the fact that it is using the skeleton, you can have a slight reference. The the, the I would I will say no to though is if you try to have um in the match itself, if you actually try to have like show a Godzilla like moves, like he slides on his tail or something, I will say no. Okay. But for a story purpose, if you want to use the skeleton of a Showa Godzilla, because it should be the same as, like, a technically the original Godzilla, I would say that is fine. But, and if you want to have, like, a note of, like, it remembers itself as Showa Godzilla for, like, a small touching moment at the end, I'm fine with that. I think the point is it still has to operate and perform similarly to Kiru. It can't. It still has to act like Kiryu. Yeah. It's still very much Kiryu, but it could have Showa memories. It could have. It could still be like Showa E, but it can't be like the. It can't just go full acrobatic on us, despite the okay, fact that. So. Despite the fact that Kiryu Wait. is actually pretty acrobatic in hindsight. Yeah, but... No, but if you had him like Kiryu fighting with Anguirus, and Anguirus knows that like Showa Godzilla is in there, and they have like this. There's like a small like he, Kiryu goes rage mode, and um. There's like a touch. Mo- you have like a small touching moment between the pair of them. I would not be opposed to that in the slightest. Right, right. It's just don't exaggerate the Showa Godzilla elements. Just have it be there for story or emotional purposes, but it still fights and operates like Kiru. Okay. Yeah. So for there, Kiryu would be like older pre Ghidorah Godzilla. Showa. Slightly leaning closer to that. Yeah. Just. Slightly. He would be the, the the major note though is. This Kiryu, if you had Showa's bones in there, he wouldn't go on a rampage. He would actually, in a way, it actually would be kind of funny because, like, if that if Showa Godzilla's DNA was in there, and let's say it was like Inguirus versus Kiryu versus Destroyer, just I'm just randomly saying, um, Kiryu would not attack Inguirus because it remembers Inguirus. Yes, and and therefore the end, you could have a switch of like. You know, it, it, it ends with, you know, Inguirus and, Ga- and Kiryu beating the other monster and them, like, having a slight moment. Maybe Inguirus escorts Kiryu to a resting place or something. You know, you could do something like that. Mm-hmm. It ends with Kiryu opening his mouth and talking to Inguirus <laughs> in a really gritty voice. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're telling Sorry, me... Inguirus, I don't go by Godzilla anymore. I go by Prometheus. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're telling me is old man Logan but Kiryu. Um hmm. kinda, but again, the, the the whole note about the, the that the whole note about the character specifically is the Kiryu went the reason why Kiryu going rage until like nineteen fifty four. Godzilla if Kiryu remembered the memories of Showa Godzilla, he wouldn't go in a destructive rampage per se. he would yeah he would unless he only got part, part of the memories back like i mean true and then he remembers yeah, those later on only remembers gigantus right but point being uh yeah point like you know point being that's like hero can be built with the skeleton of showa godzilla he just can't be doing the more exaggerated Showa Godzilla things. It still feels a little weird to say that because Kiru does do things that I argue makes it is more over the top than Showa. I'd argue. Uh, oh, um, so, sorry to interrupt, but you could, but uh, just so then you could do the tail thing. You could make it so he, his jets carry him on the bottom. Well, right, but then, but then why slide on tail at all? He could just use the jets to do the job. You could make a note that he used. You could note he does like a uh, something. S- yeah, I, that evokes the imagery without. It's weird because you're. Try, I'm trying to think of some way you could do it, but it's like a rocket kick. I, Maybe yeah. that he uses his t- slides his tail on the ground to, you know. Almost, I, I guess. I guess like the video game version in that regard. There was like a weird, bacon just got denied. Like a le- yeah. weird rocket kick, but. Uh, yeah, uh, it's Alex. It's time. Right, it, it's a strange, it's a strange request, but it's something overall I could definitely see happening more so than I would say no to. It, long story short, right. I, I would say yes to that. I would need to see the match in particular, but I think there is very interesting things you could do with that kind of scenario. Right, right. So, 
And and because we've had KWCs in the po in the past shift to other Godzilla skeletons, notably Heisei, uh, I think it's all right. Gotcha. <laughs> what about moving his tail slightly to the left or right? Gosh darn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh yeah, Grayshot, do you want the English dub of Grand Caesars? I'm good, but thank you. Uh, a gray shot is actually allergic to yeah. cheese. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> oh, it makes sense. Oh, God, no. That's fun. <laughs> I, I have a harder tolerance for cheese, I will say, though. Like, in regards to films, because... Not in real life, though. I, uh, yeah, like, you give... I love queso. You know, I love I'm rating the invasion of the Astro Monster. Um, yeah. My, I, I prefer... I prefer... Cheese... Like, I love dark comedies. Like, um, Shaun of the Dead's really good, but more so, like, uh, I think the best tone to, that I could describe is, like, something like Red vs. Blue Season 6. Is, like, you add these com comedic characters, then you have a serious conspiracy plot going on. Hmm. Like, that's kind of, like, the best way to describe, like, I, if I, like, Tremors. Dark monster movie, but it also knows how, how like, and there are some darker moments, but it also knows how to have fun. Yeah. And that's, Sorry, and that's, we, can't, we can't forgive you for your liking Gino over Invasion of the Astro Monster. <laughs> Actually, I probably would enjoy sitting down and watching that movie over Invasion of the Astro Monster, to be honest, <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> you, are good, you are tickling Alex's buttons right now. <laughs> you just You're a ticking time bomb, Grayshot, and everything you say is only adding to the fuse. Yes. Everything you say makes... Hate you more, like yeah. Great um, shot. Everything you say is cringe. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Because of your opinion. <laughs> Touche. Um. But no, yeah, that's uh. General. I also thoughts. think Godzilla's Revenge is a bad movie. No, I don't. Yes. I actually like that movie. Oh, oh thank gosh! Finally, someone well, reason. Well, 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 I think I think it screws up its message at the end, but I actually like that movie. Yeah. My brother hates it though. I do too. I will withdraw my point then. Fair yeah, well. take that, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't, <I'm> Chad. <laughs> Get fucked, one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Us to gray shot when he says Gino is a better better than Astro Monster. You finished? I mean, there's so much self pity. It sounds like you're making excuses for posting cringe. <laughs> for posting cringe. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's great. Also, Grayshot hates the Kino trilogy, so that makes them have bad opinions. I the, that one's the, the Godzilla Earth one, right? Yeah, the uh, anime yeah. trilogy. That's his Kino trilogy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like it's like watching someone do an, a mediocre like start to a race and then continuously fall flat on his... Continually fall on his face throughout the entirety of the race. It's great. <laughs> bro, bro. You're just saying that because you wish there was monster action the whole time. You just hate the new interpretations of Me Kino Mechagodzilla and Kino Ghidorah. I think they, if they were actually well executed, I would enjoy them, but they're not. I don't know. They're pretty good executed. Kaijox would agree with me. Uh, as I also would agree, even just though because I'm not the biggest fan of the fans of that film. Just because you have someone that agrees with you does not make you right. Yes, it does. <laughs> Remember, you're the person Say who that says to the more than invasion of Astro Monster. That's gonna yeah. that's gonna be held against you for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, ah. Even though Joe hasn't seen all the Kino trilogy, he's inclined to agree with me because you pissed him off that much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, today yeah, so I'm the boss, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, shoot. Okay, so apparently in the world of the, uh, world of the K uh, KWC, uh, not in the world of KWC, in the world of Toho, uh, Dakota and I have been watching this really obscure little show known as, uh, uh what is it? Chosen 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 Grand Sazer. Yeah, Chosen yeah, Grand Sazer. Chosen Kai. Just call it Ultra Star God Grand Sazer. Yeah, Ultra Star God Grand Sazer. Yes, uh, it's just something that. Don't the English dub. Mm -hmm. A Singapore English dub of all things. 
Uh, this is so, it's great. something we, yeah, Nagoda and I have been washing off the side in our own time. I'm gonna have to say I'm having fun with it. I cannot say. Grace, did you? Okay. Oh, uh, what was that, Nagoda? Uh, Grace, Grace, did you know that Toho has its own Mandalorians? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, why are you beating up the Kino Trilogy haters? I'm saving the world. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yes. But yeah, anyway. Uh, no. For As far as Grand Caesars go, which is part of a trilogy series by Toho in the, from the early 2000s, uh, it's basically a superhero... Tr- uh, 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 basically a Sentai trilogy, if you will. Uh, just like, you know, featuring different armored heroes that take control of giant robots and they beat up monsters and aliens and they're all connected in a weird way. Uh, but yeah, Nagoda and I have been watching it recently. Uh, I started with Grant Sazers and I might move into Just Ariser since that one has, also has an English Singapore yeah. dub. Yeah, I found the Singapore dub for that too, and sent it to Kaiju Yep, so I have that prepared. So I was like, "Oh boy, this is gonna take a while." Uh, and he's been losing his mind ever since. <laughs> Blood Knight. <laughs> I could totally see it. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I have been having a, tr- I've been having a blast watching the show because it's terrible. <laughs> it is on a scale of one to ten. On a scale of one ten, no. It is on a it is on a ten for being enjoyably terrible, because it's you got you got some hate it's terribly good. You get I think it's like I think even the special effects were uh, handled by Koichi Kawakita, who did the Heisei series. And who boy, if you thought the Godzilla Heisei films had issues, wait until you watch this show. It is the incarnation of the Heisei philosophy, especially when it comes to its monsters. Nagoda, can you send me a link? Oh, what? man. Oh, oh, you want the link? Okay. Uh, I'll take a link now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll take a oh, link now. Oh, yeah. It's great. It is. It is. It's definitely, like, early digital age stuff, too, so it doesn't look really nice. I mean, the suits look. To be fair, the suits actually look pretty good. There you go. I think the suits <laughs> are actually pretty solid, but, like, the digital effects and the stock elements used therein makes it more hilariously bad. On top of that, I, I'll i also say this. Years ago, I have actually tried to watch Grand Caesars because I've been meaning to study up on a monster that, you know, I've always had an eye on. Uh, and I may also do that. I, I, I may do that to expand the TK section of, the, of that trilogy one day in the future. But nevertheless, Good. I think... Uh, I tried to watch it in the original Japanese version, but the subtitles were so bad, it just took me out of it. I couldn't stand it, and the acting was rather bland and just rather bleh. You know, nothing to really, nothing, nothing to really laugh at. It just, or you know, just eh. When I when Nagoda sent me the English, the Singapore English dub. My gosh, I was laughing. Laughing so hard at how terrible it was that I eventually adjusted to its terribleness. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, gosh. It is. Terrible. So, what you're, so what you're telling us is, is that you've been converted into this religion. Yes, yes I have. <laughs> The, I have been converted into Sentai English... Si, Singapore Sentai English dubs. That's why I've been converted into. That's the new religion I am starting now. Uh, Alex, yeah. you up for a crusade? <laughs> yeah. Let's kill the fucking Power Ranger lookalikes. <laughs> yes. You cannot kill these ones. You can kill the others, but not these ones. Okay, no. I'm looking at this right now. What say is, why is Shovel Knight piloting... <laughs> Shovel Knight piloting a mech. Someone make that image, please. No, look, I'm, I'm being serious. Hold on, like, I'll, I'll pause it. I will sniff it, no, but continue. <laughs> Shovel Knight piloting a mech. <laughs> oh my god. 
It's also I have to see this. Too. That is the greatest <laughs> sentence I've ever heard in my entire life. You're too young. You'll hear more. Uh, Damn. But uh, no, I I just been having a blast with this. <laughs> Did he? It is that the dub helps the show tremendously for me when it comes to his watchability. Because even though it's acted poorly. It's not as bad as you would think. Weirdly, that sounds weird because it's acted extremely poorly. And then you'll be hearing them going like, uh, uh, or uh, or, you know, like they're crap poor attempts at emulating like certain emotional, like certain sound cues. My gosh, and it's funny. It is so funny. I also have to say that the actual dub, like the way the dub is written, it's actually not that bad. It's, it's like an abridged series dub. Oh, like a like an early like a mid two thousands abridged series dub. It doesn't sound. It's not written that bad. The subtitles that accompany it are inconsistent and terrible. But there, the actual dub is not that bad. It's it's weird to say that because it's acted terribly. But in such a way where it becomes hilariously enjoyable. Heck, two out of three of the Water Tribe people in the second arc are voiced by an Australian dude and a British dude. I don't know why, it's great. <laughs> and the other one has a high-pitched voice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Grant Caesars. Uh, this has been a trip of a show. Uh, and it's amazing. I would recommend everyone to check it out. Uh, the Singapore English dub. Check that out. It has my recommendation for just being so bad it's good. This has been the truest so bad it's good experience, I, experience I've had in a while since watching The Room. It's great. <laughs> uh. Oh. Oh. It actually does, like, shockingly enough, it does have, like, one or two very interesting questions it poses up. And the sad part is there is some interesting potential to be had with this, but it doesn't go anywhere with it. Typical of shows of these natures, which is sad because there are, like, one or two sequences. There are, like, one or two, uh, story, like, there are some story elements and some story beats that are interesting, like, oh, uh... Like this alien chick in the first story arc, uh, the Akela, uh, the Akela on the first story arc, manipulates the Wind Tribe by convincing them that the other tribes are bad people. Like, okay, it's their duty to protect the Earth because that's what a Grand Sage is supposed to do. But, you know, like, and she manipulates them to believe that only the Wind tri Tribe is meant to save the world from the impending alien threat. And one of the members of the tribe, you know, uh, kind of, like, has a strong sense of loyalty and duty and sort of follows her around and has some kind of a, like, a rom there's a romantic element in there that was, like, interesting, but it's never really delved into, unfortunately. It's sad because that's an interesting idea. Uh, so, it's Power Ranger Avatar. Kind of, yeah, something like that. Uh, I guess. Which avatar? The last airbender. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Power Rangers, avatar, last airbender, yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it is. It, it, it kind of is. Uh, or there's another point where two characters that are from the Earth tribe are a cop and an associate uh, in a, in a, in an associate's girlfriend. Boxing. Which... Man, that's so true, Joe. <laughs> The romance was great in Megalon 2. Yes, it was. Anyway. Uh, like, like, there's an interesting... There was... There would have been some interesting conflict, but they re pretty much resolved that within, like, the span of an episode or two. Like, they just kind of get along happy... Happy... Happy Dory and whatnot. Oh, man. But, yeah, it is... It is terrible. I do have to say, the... The, the, seri the series is terrible and superficial... But the dub makes it hilarious. Makes it enjoyable and, to me, worth the freaking watch. 
I am probably going to be watching more later tonight. Myself, probably, because hot dang, I am going to have a blast. <laughs> Anyway. So, does anyone else want the English dub of Grand Caesars? Sure. Run while you still can. Flee. Flee in terror. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, I, I would, time. but I don't listen to clowns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, that was the biggest rank. A, a clown? He's the goddamn circus. <laughs> Only a clown would know where no, the circus No, I'm the head of the KWC. The circus is the KWC. Duh. Fuck, he's right. <laughs> You're still a clown, though. Uh... Do you know that clown college is harder to get into than Harvard? <laughs> really? I, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, clown, clown college is harder to get into than Harvard University. Huh. I guess that makes sense. You can't just... Add, you just can't throw anyone into being a clown. I mean, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that was enough of my weird rant of Grant, my weird passionate rant about Grant Caesars of all things. <laughs> what the, what in the world? Uh, they even reference, actually, you know what Grant Caesars also has? References. There are actually two distinct references made within the show that connects it to Godzilla, believe it or not. Uh, not that se uh, what? Yeah, there are a couple of Godzilla references of Sony there. They're not related to them continuity wise. They're just references. Like there's one point where uh some somebody references another uh like another of the uh every, there's a golden Godzilla reference thrown in there somewhere. It's like, oh you said a golden Godzilla? And I was like, oh no, it's this other thing. I think it's another of the uh Grant Caesars or something. Uh, there's that, and then, uh, actually, uh, uh, Hiroshi, Ho Hiroshi Koizumi actually cameos in the, uh, series. Grandpa Chujo. Yeah, Grandpa Chujo. Mm hmm From K Grayshot's favorite Godzilla movie at Tokyo S.O.S. Yep. uh, yeah. Oh, neat. Yeah, he actually cameos as a character called Professor Chujo, so, yeah. <laughs> no, Kaiju X redeemed himself because he said 2014 is his legit favorite movie. Wait, what? what? I don't think... what? Wait, when did I say that? No, I said Grey Shot. Oh. Yeah, 2014 is my... If you want, like, my actual... F yeah, legit favorite 2014. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if you want, like, my... my Like, what I would have as, like, a special place in my heart, I'm gonna go with Tokyo SOS. Ew. <laughs> uh, so, it's... And I thought I had controversial opinions. <laughs> But yeah, for you know. Anyway, uh. But yeah, there are like some references shown in there. And clearly, they foreshadowed the Mandalorian Shovel Knight with the, the designs of the uh, Water Tribe, so. Uh, but... Yes, that's what they clearly did. Die, uh, so, so easily. <laughs> so. Ah, I could see the connection already. <laughs> And the Bud Knight. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, freaking. I don't know. I, I enjoy really weird stuff. I recognize that the stuff I like, other people may not like. I am weird. I will fully admit that. I mean, okay, we are in the kaiju community. So, like, that statement goes for anything we like. To be fair, even within the kaiju community, the stuff I like can be still seen as weird. Damn. So, you know. It really do be I, I, I mean, if you ever wonder why are we at... Why, I will say in regards to KBC Edition, uh, if we were to take a look at matches, uh, Kaiju X is usually the one that uh, that goes for the Stranger Editions than me. Mm -hmm. So I... I Black Moth, uh, Uma, 2001 Angiris, uh, Freyden. Yeah. Did you just call Anguirus weird? That's kind of cringe, bro. Okay. Oh, he's not that weird. <laughs> he's good boy. Yeah. He's a good boy. Yeah, okay. I was about to say, I'm about to clown on you hard if you call my boy Anguirus weird again. 
But yeah, I, I do tend I'll... to veer to more of the weird stranger stuff. Like, the weird, obscure stuff. That's usually my... I tried pushing for Kamagiran. Uh, yep. Which, you know, before he got rejected. Uh, yeah, looking at it, usually Kamagiran... Uh, I mean, that one was kind of... Nor that one's an average edition. Um, not an ultra seven. That was... Uh, Zandora. That was MM, mostly. but Zandora was MM. And so was Chikiru. Um should probably just instead of looking at the matches, I need to just look at the statistics. Uh, Ang Anguira, uh -huh. right. Armor the Titans, yes, the uh, Bagora. I know that was MM, but that was like I also, combo. I also kind of pushed for that, yeah. Bulk Sardan, yes, yes. Um, the retirement's for me, you're welcome. Um, Godzilla Rewa was first introduced by you. I know that one. Uh, Griffin. Griffin Wait, was. by me? No. That was a... Uh... What? Oh. That was one of the ideas as we were trying to work it out. Oh, like, okay, oh, I'll yeah, do a yeah, survey. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You proposed it to oh, me. Super but, Godzilla, uh... too. Super Godzilla, as well. Yeah, Super Godzilla is specifically the second Super Godzilla, not the first one. Don't get confused, guys. Wait, the second one? What? what are you talking about? Yeah, Super Godzilla 2? Duh. Wait, what are you talking about? That, that fight well, Super Bagan in the sequel? Super Godzilla 2? Duh. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Grey Shot's, Grey Shot's and that's all you around. need to know. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Grey Shot, I what are you smoking? Why aren't you sharing? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty want, much it. Bacon, you don't want apple peaches drugs. <laughs> oh, Trilopod. That was also yours. But yeah. I did. I, that was monster. I was. I, I seconded that hard. Mm -hmm, right. But yeah, no, uh, a lot of the Stranger Editions, uh, that would be Kaiju X. Usually the ones that are on point, like the Legendary Monsters, uh, Kashin Mubak, the Kamovis Trio. Those ones are more me. <laughs> right, right. Well, I still push for, like, the uh, Amoeba Trio, to be fair, so. Yeah, true, true, true. So, I used Agora, you know, who's a weird oddball that's underutilized, so. Yeah, it's still a cool monster, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, boy. So, yeah, I mean, that, that won't be stopping weird oddball monsters being added in the future. And, uh, spoiler warning, there will be. I won't say who. Thank gosh Birdman isn't here, otherwise he would have spoiled it. So much. And Nathus. Nathus would have spoiled it hard. Er. Mm -hmm. yep, this is why we can't trust him. And we, why we all make fun of him. <laughs> The, I write with him make fun of him. Low key low key spoiling. <laughs> low key? Well, what do you mean? Well There's him no and Bird well, him, Birdman more him so. and Birdman go in well him and Birdman go in the fucking general discussion and start spoiling shit. Ugh. Oh look at me guys, I'm gonna spoil everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking jackass. Although Grisha oh, also course, kind of spoiled man. something Kaiju had wanted to keep secret. Oh, gosh. Although that only reached four people. Oh, thank gosh. I know. I, thank gosh that did, too. <laughs> no, thank God Nathis didn't see Yes, that. yes. So. We can't have to be fair, I've, I've also alluded to the idea. I have also, like, you know, also done teases and hints, but that's all I want to do, or just, like, teases and hints of, like, you know, it's like, oh. Did you end the recording yet? Not yet, no. No. Soon. So, probably about to in a little bit if there's nothing else to, uh, like, bring up or whatever. You got any news? News? Like, kaiju news? I mean, hard to say. Coronavirus has sort of screwed everything up. So, you know. Rest in peace, G Fast. Actually, you um, know what? Uh, actually, speaking of which, speaking of actually, one bit of news I can say is that Mudo Prime, banner wise, will probably be here sooner than you think. Uh, because uh, I yeah. have been like, there has been a fake custom figure. I think everyone's probably seen it at this point, but the custom figure yes. made by that one dude, uh, like, has been circulating online, especially courtesy of like you know certain uh, like you know like Kaiju News. Uh, Kaiju News outlet or whatever. 
uh, you know, just been uh, like posting that, the sharing that kind of stuff. I'm like, hey, look, really cool stuff. It's like, oh, sweet. So I contacted the the dude who made the model, and we were able to negotiate. So I ba- I basically bought the figure off of him. How much? Uh, one seventy. Fuck. That's it's about it. Genius. How about it? Uh, like. I understand it's a unique figure, and that's really cool. It's one of a kind, but goddamn, just buy an SH Monster Arts. That's basically what it is. I mean, that's what it basically is. It's an SH Monster Arts, a one of a kind figure. That's cool. So that that's why the price to me was totally worth it. It was either that, or oh, wow. it was either that or five hundred fifty for a three D model. I was like, uh, nope, I'm taking this. <laughs> not yeah, you get the figure. That's easy. It's like I am with the. Shelf. Yeah. People, it's like a cool. Oh, uh-huh, right. So not only that, not only that, uh, you'll get, you guys will be expecting high resolution photos of that baby sometime in the near future once I get it. So that's going to be that's exciting for me because you know that just gives a lot more fun to play with when it comes to posing uh, Mudo Prime and having fun with Mudo Prime. So that way, if anyone asks, "Hey, can I get Mudo Prime in this pose from this angle?" It's like, yeah, I can do that. So. So yeah, I'm looking. Hello. So sorry, if it finished what you were saying, I cut you off. Oh no, I was just gonna say I'm gonna have fun with that when he gets here. So okay. super looking forward to that. Um, kind of off topic, but you brought up the virus, so like I kind of have to say it. They're going to. They're they might be quarantining my entire state. True. Oh, Fuck. Golly. Yeah. They, like I might not be able to get out of Washington for a while. Jeez. Oh no, that's uh, that's the thing. I'm uh, I have I planned in advance to going to Arizona, um, in the next week, and yeah, I heard that rumor as well, and, or not not specifically for Washington, but for others like states. So I am, uh, yeah, that's gonna be great. Well, I really hope it's not true because my stepmom is planning to go on vacation to Central America. Mm. And if that's true, then she can't go on vacation. Right. I know my mother had plans on going to Israel, but that had to be pushed back to like September or November or something. Jesus. So. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, stay safe, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't panic. Don't uh, unless you have it. Uh, in which case, seek medical help. But don't, don't stay calm. Stay cool. Don't steal um, everyone's toilet paper. Great toilet shot. paper. We, we, we live in a country where we value pr- money over actually well-being be- of citizens, so I don't think yeah. anyone's going to seek help. Sadly, because oh, they're going to they're going to be it's going to kill them financially. No, you're not wrong. It, it, the United States, it's very hard for people to uh, financially afford medical care. I, I, we're getting very off topic, but it is it is a valid concern for all of us. It is a valid concern. The transplant Plus, people are getting um, their job. The one thing I will say is for those that are like, oh, I'm fine. I'll just go out. I am perfectly fine. Don't. Because A, it's not It's not a way about who, if you get sick. Because if, you, it's, if, you're, if you're daring yourself and you're kind of being stupid, then like karma. But like two, if you can get other people sick, that's the greater threat. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because... Even if this is like a bad flu, let's say that because like a normal flu season kills, I think fifty thousand people in the United States. True. If this is a worse flu season, think that to the Spanish flu took out three percent of the entire uh, world population. Obviously, the different places, but yeah, we don't need people spreading this thing. If you're like, oh, I'm fine, I can just go out and be no, take necessary precautions, wash your hands, cover your mouth. But, you know, think of others, uh, you know, as much as you're thinking of yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, I think Nagoto was trying to say something. Oh, yeah. Nagoto, what were you trying to say? Oh, I was just saying, stop, don't be racist to all Asians because we're not all Chinese. Yeah, no, seriously. Is that really happened? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Grisha, a lot of people are basically blaming Asians for the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not, it's not like going to Europe and calling a German guy French. Yeah, pretty much. Not all Asians are the same. No, not in the least. Not in the least. Fucking also, stores uh, are running out of everything. Yeah, yep. the, the stores on uh, the island I live on are like completely just gone. Mm-hmm. Everything is like gone. Mm-hmm. Okay, I went to a I went to a local store and there was like 
I mean, it wasn't all, it wasn't completely, everything wasn't completely gone, but like the, some aisles were just like so bare and it was insane. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, even earlier before this discuss like this podcast started, freaking work called me and was like, well, called me and was like, Hey, could you come in tomorrow after you get back from church? Because, uh, we're, we're, it's a bit of a mess right now. So yeah. Oh boy. It yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, also, for those that are planning, this is not going to be a. Few, uh, this is we're getting really on top, but regardless, like, I think this is an important thing. Plan ahead because this is not something that's going to disappear when it gets warm. Mm -hmm. Because that's not how this is. That's not how it works. Um, well, you might say, oh, with flu seasons or whatnot, it disappears. That's because flu, at least for the north, they don't. It doesn't. Occur. How I've had it described to me is they don't do well when humidity changes dramatically. If it stays the same, that's why, like, in the southern hemisphere, the flu stays year-round. But in the northern hemisphere, it doesn't. It goes in, like, waves. Um, this is not the flu. This is, uh, this is like, something like SARS, uh, to which point it will last as long as oh. it can. It will not disappear yeah. when it gets warm. I don't know if this is true, but I've heard it's a different strain of SARS. Oh, yeah, it, this is, that is true. It, it came from... Uh, for those that are curious where it came from, it is derived from, they believe it is derived from a small, it came from a bush market in China, which had, it was like a small armored creature, which should have been a kaiju at this thing. I looked this thing up. It's like a small, like imagine like an armadillo, but like even more armor. Uh, 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 it's like a pen pangolin? Pangolin. Pangolin. Yes. Oh, sand shrew, you mean. Oh, is that what that sand true is based yeah, off sand of? Yeah, sand slash are yep. based off pangolins. Oh. Dude, those th those things are so armored, it's insane. It, it, like, Wait, uh, so they came from a pangolin? Apparently, yeah, that's what it was traced to. Pangolin. It was people eating <laughs> I pangolins. I recently did a report on those. Yeah, so what apparently happened was um, the... Hey, for those that don't know... In China, there's these things called bush markets where you can go and acquire any kind of uh, creature you can. Now, keep in mind in these uh, more, again, towards Wuhan, central China, when it comes to food, this is a very basic market. This is a market where you could get like bat, uh, wild cat, uh, all these different types of wild uh, game, essentially. Anything, everything and anything. And some of them they kill before they get to the market and some they leave alive. And that's the problem is disease can very easily move from one animal to the other. Like, like if a uh, birds are in one cage, they can pass along something to like another cage mm. and then they can pass along like that. That's more human related. And then it passes along to some like a human yeah. and a pangolin is apparently what they believe is like, was the chain to humanity for this specifically. Um, but yeah, no, it is. It is very serious. Do not, it is not something to completely, you know, it's not going to end the world. It's going to run its course, but you need to stay vigilant. Keep, you know, obviously stay safe and make sure that you are doing all the necessary steps. If you have a fever, you know, <laughs> put, you know, put something to, you know, bring it down, you know, just do the, ba do basic steps and all, but keep, be more wary of those of older age because while well, for those who are younger, it, a very uh, bad flu. In fact, for the youngest, uh, for not like young, young, young kids, but apparently it doesn't really affect those of, I think it's like 10 to 19. Right. I think yeah. it, it doesn't really affect them. Like it, like literally you, you become either asymptomatic or very, 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 very mild. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that, but that's if I recall correctly. Uh, um, it's more so those of elderly 50 or above. That's when you start seeing like the the seriousness or like uh, how bad the disease is getting. That's when you see a spike. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But uh, no, regardless, just keep that in mind. Don't be dumb. Don't rush for toilet paper. <laughs> if that's, I mean, if you need it, fine. But don't go for. Don't be the one person to take twenty rolls or fifty rolls. You're quarantining yourself for two weeks. I need like two rolls at max. Yeah, and I think that's the average for most people. Right, uh, unless you have a family, then in that case, getting more rolls would be better. But oh yeah, if you have a family, yeah, get like a go to Costco and get one giant one. Then you're good for like a month or two, maybe three or four. Mm -hmm. 
I yeah. So, but yes, don't yeah, but don't be jerks to others. Don't be like blaming others for this. This is yes, this is be due to a situation in another country that you had no control over. But that doesn't mean you get to just because someone is really you know, just because you think a person might be of the same demographic that has no correlation. They did nothing to stop do this. Mm-hmm. You want a good representation. You're basically uh, it, it's 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 very much like when the U.S. interned a whole bunch of Japanese, even though the uh, like in the United States in World War II, even though, though like some of those people fought on our side and like and their families fought on our side, and they were absolutely not loyal. But because they were of the same demographic as someone you're fighting, oh no, they must be enemies. Right. It's like no. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I think we're we're getting very off topic, but I, I just oh, wanted to. Uh, I'm also going to say one other thing. I think when, whenever this is over, like the huge part of it, I think life's going to be very different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mainly, mainly for like schools, work. I think a lot of them are going to start taking, <laughs> looking at it. Th- just do it, like work from home or do online courses at this point oh, right. for a good portion of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think life's going to be the world we see it is going to change. It's going to have to. I just, I don't know how my school's handling it because, yeah, I do. I do my meetups like once a week at the college, but I don't know if the local library is closed. So I don't know if I have to just stay home or if I still have to go into town. Mm-hmm. My school is weird. <laughs> um, well, that's the thing is they are shutting down everything and everything uh, for safety precautions, which they're not overreacting. They're very much trying to protect people. Yep. Um, yeah. Which every is a good thing. Washington, every school in Washington is closed. Every school, every, oh, yeah, my, my old school and back in uh, Pennsylvania, and we haven't even received, I mean, there have not been that many cases. They're all closed, so, for multiple weeks. Um, but the other thing is, last, the last, last, last thing I will say is, this is going to affect the economy. <laughs> so, yes. th- save, Adam. do not spend all your money on, like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> false uh, uh, insta-cures or whatnot. This is going to last a while. This is going to affect the economy, and yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's going to be a hot minute. Yeah. So, but yeah, those I, are those are my recommendations as uh, <laughs> so as somewhat as, a, as someone that uh, knows a bit of history and has seen this stuff and looked into this, and also someone who has stayed up to like three a.m. a, a few nights. Uh, doing as much research as possible without diving into like, quote unquote, the fa- the, the fake stuff that's going around. Mm-hmm. I would recommend if you guys know the Joe Rogan podcast. He did one a week. I think it was like a a week ago. Apparently, he's a very popular podcaster. Um, but he uh, he he had someone that uh, I think worked he had worked with the CDC for like multiple years under multiple administrations ever since like. Uh, he worked under multiple Bush administrations, the pre- uh, President Obama, the, I think Clinton. Um, but he's seen he was there during the 2003 SARS outbreak, and he has a lot of experience on it. So, a very detailed uh, overview of the subject and what's going on at the moment. Sorry to again, sorry to dive into all the heavy, fun KWC stuff, but <laughs> all the fun heavy KWC stuff, just like how we had to uh, quarantine Space Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> because he, he used the Corona beam. Ah, but... <laughs> uh, if I do have if I do have one recommendation, and this is something that you should take with a grain of salt, mind you, do not... If you uh, lose money on this, do not kill me. But, um... If you were to... If you were... Notice the stock market has gone in a bit of a roller coaster. But... If there's one stock I would recommend taking a look at. It's the uh, American Airlines stock because it is dropped. <laughs> it is dropped from uh, what was uh, at the B. What is in like 2018 from $58. Now it's down to 14. Oh my goodness! So, 
So, so if you ever think about getting a stock that might that has you know as long as they survive, <laughs> hey, here's my here's my poor stock news of this segment. <laughs> my goodness, jeez. Well, yeah, very good. Oof. Uh, anyway, oh. Uh, uh, but I, I think we've had, I think we've got all over the place. Yeah, yeah, we definitely got enough. We got <laughs> enough coronavirus talk for one day, so. To be fair, we did get everything that we absolutely needed to out of the way. True. <laughs> yeah, we've got a bit over time, too. So, thank goodness. Thank goodness for that. This is why we could discuss KDBCs and KDBCEs first. So that way we can talk about the coronavirus and the effect it has in current events. Uh, and how it's how it's following the same plot as Kaiju X's favorite Toho movie. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, see, this is what happens when you want your favorite movie to happen. No, a uh, virus. The most fucking depressing movie of all time. I, Alex told me not to watch it, but I kind of want to. Don't. Do. You'll regret it. It is... On a uh, scale of heavy. 1 to 10. Oh, uh, this, is a, this is a freaking 10. 10 of depressing is my kind of... No, I meant how much I'll regret it. Uh, oh, I was actually going to... subjective. 10. I was I was actually gonna say on the whole um on the whole situation if you do want to uh if you do want to see something that's better I recommend Gamma versus Virus. Hey, hey. My, bro- my brother had to the put a post. Of, my brother had to post a video, and we're like, well, we can't say it because of YouTube. So what we're going to do is actually just uh, post images of Virus every time we talk about. It. <laughs> we tried to find nice. the word like the goofiest images of that stupid guy. <laughs> You know, I th- I think I could be wrong, but I think there's a certain cut of some of the old Gamera movies that are in the public domain. Oh. Hmm. Huh. Odd. Yeah, I know. That's, that's strange. That's very strange. Just like how King yeah, Kong's in the... Look at that up. Like, just like how King Kong's in the public domain, but he isn't. It's strange. What? Well, Kong is... King Kong isn't. Right? Uh, Because I think it was the novelization that became public domain. Because there was a novelization that came out before the movie that eventually fell into public domain because I don't think it was ever renewed. That's how King Kong became public. But Universal still holds rights to the character. It's weird. Mm. That's why they... That's why in the movie they, like... Kong is king of this island. I mean, I think that's legendary, sort of like sure. Legendary did negotiate with the Universal on the matter, sure, but I think that's why he's not being called King Kong. That's why he's only ever addressed as Kong. Oh, actually, that is that does bring up a good topic, which is how many of you guys think that this movie is not going to actually see light, the light of day this this year? Oh, like being pushed back Probably again? Not. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. That's a good question. Coronavirus has really thrown everything out, really thrown everything schedule out of the loop, so maybe... And to think it almost came out this weekend. Ah, yeah, to, th- yeah, to think it would have came out this weekend had they kept the original schedule, but it's so strange. It is so strange that things are just... Huh. I don't know why. I do not know what's going on back there, but... I wouldn't be surprised if it gets pushed back to 2021. This is going to be the movie that got away. (laughs) The the trailer got pushed back. Oh, naturally. Naturally. Any hope we had died with the coronavirus. Yeah, the coronavirus first kill Godzilla. Kong, one of the first kills, Kong versus Godzilla. (laughs) The release trailer. (laughs) To be fair, it's actually probably good that it was delayed because it like in regards to this, because can you, like, have you guys heard of the movie New Mutants? Yeah, it got canceled. Like, yes. I mean, pushed back th- for like the fifth time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a movie that was filmed in 2016 with one of the stars of like Game of Thrones, and yeah. it was, well, it is now, um, it has now been pushed back for what has been five, like four or five years, like something like that. So this poor movie is trying so hard to get released, and every time it comes close, it's like no. Wow. That's funny. That is funny. Might as well just have a straight-in DVD. Or just Disney Plus. Disney owns Fox now. (laughs) 
No, I think there's certain I think there's certain contracts that say that New Mutants has to be released in theaters. Oh. Oh yeah, but going back to the whole Gamera public domain thing, I think I've from what I found, I think the four that are public domain are Gamera the Invincible, War of the Monsters, Attack of the Monsters, and Destroy All Planets. So yeah, certain Gamera movies are, and, uh, and certain versions are public domain. And Gamera. Just like how Gamera is. I can't wait to get the Chad Gamera arrow box set. Heck yeah. Same. Same here. And here, here's the best thing. They haven't even released the final specs I yet. No, what the heck are going to be in the final specs? But they have the comic, so no. it's automatically a purchase from me. Well, the comic and the prequel novel. Yes, the or prequel comic. No, no, no. Yeah. Here, here's the final. Here's the final spec. They're gonna give us a hand job. Bruh. Dang it! No, 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 no. Dude, Imagine if they released uh, Gamer Two Thousand. Well, um, no. Here's what I'm thinking: Gamer versus Baragon Heisei manga translated. Yes. I know that's asking much. Considering that they have the reprint of the Dark Horse comics and the English translation of Matt Frank's The Last Hope. Hey, I I doubt this will ever happen, but watch them break the internet for kaiju fans by sh- by putting in the Godzilla and Gamera play in the 70s. Oh gosh, that would be Based nuts. Oh my god. Them. That would be nuts. I don't think that would ever pass, but that would be No, nuts. it wouldn't. But... <laughs> but yeah, no, the, it... Let's say in the unlikely event they ever did, they would break the fucking internet for kaiju oh, fans. Oh yeah, they would be the, they'd be hailed the kings by all kaiju oh, fans. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, imagine if uh, they for the Reiwa era they did that Godzilla versus Gamera movie they were going to do in two thousand two. That's what Katakawa proposed, but Toho was basically like, "Nah, your monster, is, your monster's going to take advantage of our profits." Uh, basically, I thought it was God, I thought it was Gamera's gonna win in the movie, and so I was like, nah. Uh, no, I think I heard that they were willing to let Godzilla win. Right. Uh, but not for which I think is, I mean, if you have a more animalistic Gamera, like Gamera just shows up, pays homage to the original. I think that could have worked. Mm-hmm. Like having not Gamera not being like this guardian monster, but like more in line with the original character. Right, where he was just a big monster that destroyed cities and saved children for some reason. Uh, yeah. But yeah, for you to... Curious Saga AU, where instead of Mothra in Tokyo SOS, it's Gamera. <laughs> That'd be a good match. Uh, I, you're half way there-ish. If you're asking for a Gamma versus Kira match, be careful because that may become a reality sooner than you think. Now that is epic. Are you sure? Uh, written by Thomas Singleton, so, or Thomas Fairchild. Thomas Fairchild. So... Whoa. Get his name right, Kaiju Lex. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I had to correct myself. Also, I think Younger is in the public domain. It might be. Which Wait, one? What? Yeah, the original. Oh. So not the new one. New is relative, but... Mm. Y'all, y'all want to write a Young Gary movie? Oh gosh, we could. Probably. Young Gary versus Gappa. Yes! Young Gary versus Young no. Gary. But where's Gappa? <laughs> what about... Hey, what's the... What? I'm, I'm trying to think, what's that green monster with the weird head that was from the 60s, but he got that revival, that short movie revival with the weird... Oh, Gwila? Oh, Gwila. Gu- Gu- yeah, yeah, how do you spell yeah. that? Uh, Gwila, G-U-I... I got... L-L-A, something like that? Gilala. Monster X. Gilala, yeah. Gilala. It was like a parody where, like, all the countries... Gwila. Yeah, G-8 Summit or something. Yeah, yeah, G-8. Yeah, Attack of the G-8 Summit. Yeah, he fights Takimajin and is Monster X. Yes. Didn't he fight... Wasn't... 
I could be completely wrong on this. Wasn't, like, North Korea in that, too? Yes. They were the villains. Ah, uh, okay. Jo yeah. Well, I didn't expect them to be the heroes. <laughs> well, fucking... I'm pretty sure... Kim Jong Un's dad is the is the antagonist of the movie. Wow, that's pretty on point. I mean, oh, Kim Jong Il, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I actually, um, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> it was like a parody of like giant monster matches or, so, or giant monster movies or something, or at least it tried to be. Yeah, he, he was like, I like giant monster movies, and he makes ridiculous movies, so he wanted to make a parody. He made a movie about a detective stuffed animal cat. So. Take it as you want. Uh, anyway. Well, I mean, he beat Detective Pikachu then. Yeah. Anyway. No, no, no. <laughs> All this seems to be going. Okay. Yeah, because I thought his original movie was public domain, but I guess not. Ah, uh, shoot. Oh, well. Yeah, I just know that the monster from prehistoric planet version of Gappa, that's public domain and certain versions of Gamera movies. Mm -hmm. huh. Are we still recording? Yeah, we are still recording, but I was just about to stop guys, recording. So. Also, did you guys know there was an urban legend <laughs> for monster from prehistoric planet where, they, where someone mentions, Gappa's destroyed the city, and then another character says, yeah, but at least it's on the N-word side of the town. Wait, what? Wait, there's an urban legend. There, there's an urban legend where everyone, where people thought they said the N-word in that cut. Oh gosh, I, I don't know. But that turned out to okay, be false. Okay, that's false. All right, good. Well, that yeah, that's an easy find. Let's watch the movie. Oh, it's not there. Okay, problem like problem solved. urban myth solved. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said urban legend at the beginning. Yeah. Well, that's like the um. That's kind of like the, I guess, the Mandela effect, where like a whole bunch of people think, "Oh yeah, I remember that." And it's like, yeah, but that didn't happen. I remember seeing that. More, more than likely, a whole bunch of <laughs> some people with maybe a, I don't know, racist overture on life probably just heard that and just filled in the blanks and were like, "Oh yeah, that ma that makes sense," even though they're completely wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing that commercial years ago. That was an adorable commercial. Oh. Very I still want one. I know! Tiny little Gilala! There are so many of them, too! They're like cats! Gilala versus uh, Army versus Gyra Army Wed. Oh, gosh. Uh, hey, just think, if Gilala was actually a Toho, Toho project, product, we could have added him to the KWC and have multiples implied by this commercial. Oh, gosh. No, it just would have been multiple babies. Oh, it's commercial! Yeah, it's from a commercial. Oh. So, I remember, yeah, I remember seeing that it's on TV ages ago. Oh, man. Good times. It's mentioned in the movie, too. Wait. Oh, neat. Wait, the commercials mentioned in the movie? No. The multiple Gilalas, because they think that if they blow him up, there will be multiples oh, of Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Huh. Interesting. That was a theory they had, kind of like how they thought that if they blew up Sanda and Gyra, right, there'd, there'd be, be thousands, thousands of, of them. them. Oh yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, that's right, that's right. Ah, oh, interesting. Hmm. But nevertheless, I'll be uh, I'll be heading out. This one's probably going to be going up a little late because work called me in for tomorrow. So, uh, damn. So I mean, it should be. It should should still be out within the week. Obviously, to the people listening to this, this won't be an issue. So it might take a bit, and a, and much apologies for that. So in the meantime, oh. uh, yeah, I found the commercial. Right. Uh, yep. There's the commercial. <laughs> yep. And in the meantime, we will see you guys next time for next month's KWCC. Till then, everyone. <laughs>